Hello, hello, hello. This is Tony Mike Graven coming to you from Chicago as usual. And Judge Alex Manning was at it again. I threw it on in the background and there were some nuggets in there. I had to go. Let's do it. Don't do that. Just I will mute you now, Miss Jones. All right, now no more girl, Miss Barnett. Now you tell me. Judge, I inadvertently said if we could a Marietta Annex looks like they're on. If we could start with them first and then do Cobb, because they only have one Marietta Annex, please. Okay. All right, everybody, Jonah, come on in. Come on into the booth. Come on into the booth. Judge, someone's joining now from pretrial. Okay. Come on into the booth, gentlemen. Have a seat. Okay, we're slightly Come on into the booth, works. gentlemen. Have a seat. Hmm. All right, everybody that's in here. Couple of rules. One. Gentlemen, keep your head up. Keep your head up where I can see you. I should be able to see. Nope. Everybody, sit up straight. Sit up straight. There you go. Sit up straight where I can see you. Everybody's on mute. So if you you're talking, I can't hear you. So what you need Hello. to do <laughs> is not talk when I'm talking, number one. But wave hey, at me when I call your drill. name. All right. So gentlemen, you're in the booth. You're muted. Wave at me when I call your name so that I will know that I see you. Hello, everybody Manning. else, if you are not a lawyer and you are not talking, I'm stopping your video. If I catch you driving, I'm removing you from uh this hearing as quick as you can say. Bruh. Exactly. I'll cut you off. Okay. Now, gentlemen, what I call tonight is a you problem. It's not a me problem. It's not your mama's problem. It's not your lawyer's problem. It's not your brother's problem or your sister's problem. This is a you problem. That means that anything that occurs tonight, you need to listen to. You are responsible. Okay. Listen to what I say about bond. I'm not going to give you a total because I'm moving fairly fastly. Nobody wants to be here all night tonight. What you gentlemen are going to do are going to stay sitting up, paying attention. We're not going to mash our zits. We're not going to play with our hair. This is not Helen's house of hair. We're not going to get up and walk out and stick around and talk to the people behind us. Uh, come on in, 3 South Booth 4. Talking to you especially. Come on in. Have a seat. Don't be shy. All right? I understand they're giving med 7 South Booth 2. 7 South Booth 2. Keep your head up. Pull your hair back out of your eyes. There you go. I need to see everybody's bright, beautiful face, okay? This is about you. Pay attention to what I say about your bond conditions. Your lawyer should mail you a copy of your bond conditions. If you happen to bond out, before you get there, if I were you, you need to call your lawyer and tell them you need a copy of your bond condition because your bond condition is going to tell you stay away if you have to have an ankle monitor, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got to pay attention. Nobody will be driving. Ms. Gibbs, don't start driving again. If anybody drives, like I said, I'll kick you off. So make sure that you do that. If I tell you to stay away, stay away. If I tell you you have a curfew, you have a curfew. If I put an ankle monitor on you, you have an ankle monitor. I'm not going to be able to hear you once again. So if I ask you a question, it will require a yes or a no. Would y'all like to hear answered it? Yes? No. That's it. All right, everybody, pay attention. We'll get you out of here just as quickly as possible. Once again, everybody's on mute. The inmates, so you will not be able to be heard today unless one of them takes off mute like the Marietta Annex or something, okay? So, gentlemen, sit up. Like I said, if it's medical call, I know, and you have to step out and get your meds, step out there and get them. Come back in. Sit up. Don't put your head down. Don't go to sleep like we had somebody the other night. This is all a big deal to you guys, okay? So pay attention, gentlemen. First, what we're going to deal with is Dexter Freeland. Where are they at? Where is it? There we go, Dexter Freeland. We have Javonna Smith in. Hey, how you doing, Your Honor? Hey, how you doing? Now, of course, if I call and an inmate's not in there, I'm going to skip it and go to the next one. Or if your lawyer's not here, I will skip it and go to the next one. Okay? So here we go. This has got two cases. Bostick, Bostick. Who we have for pre trial? Is it Bostick? It's uh, Boxy for pre trial. Okay. Boxy. So we got two four zero. All right. And she knows I'm, you know, I move kind of fast. All right. So we got position 10 and 11, Dexter Freeland. Yes. 2-2, okay. two, two, CP, 213-190, Dexter Freeland, 172 days without indictment. They got no bond as of October the 14th on both cases, theft by taking felony, criminal damage to property, second degree, giving false information to a law enforcement officer. 2-2, two, two, CP, 213-191, once again, 172 days without indictment, no bond as of October the 14th, theft by taking felony, possession of tools for a crime, criminal damage to property, times three. <laughs> ah. The defendant has 40 cycles. Um, defendant, we'll start from the earliest. Um, the probation violation in 2022. Defendant has four FTAs in 2022. Defendant has an entering automobile or other motor vehicle with intent to commit theft or felony in 2018. Defendant has a possession of a firearm or knife during commission or attempt to commit certain felonies in 2018. Defendant has a, probation, a parole violation in 2016. 
Defendant has a burglary in 2003. Defendant has a probation violation in 2003. Defendant has an FTA in 2000. And defendant has a burglary in 2001. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. What do you say, Ms. Smith? Can you give me an address where he's going to live? Yes. Um, it's the same address that he has um, on his booking report. It's 1376 Miller Reed Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia. And this uh. is where he lives with his mother. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Mr. Freeland is 53 years old. He is from Atlanta, Georgia. He does have family family in the area, as stated, um, his mother and then also two of his daughters. Um, prior to his arrest, Mr. Freeland uh, was able to maintain two jobs. He worked full time for CSX, cleaning and maintaining the railroad tracks, and he worked part time as a stalker as a stalker <laughs> in Blair Village pawn shop. He does believe that he would be able to return to. He was also a stalker and a drug dealer. Both jobs, Mr. Freeland. Uh, he is a high school graduate with some college education. He attended Middle Georgia Tech, where he pursued cosmetology for barbershop and also commercial and residential um, electrician. Um, Mr. Freeland has been in custody for 172 days without bond, Your Honor, and thus he is entitled to a bond. Um, he has exhausted his uh, financial resources. His mother, she lives off of a fixed income. Um, so we are requesting uh, for the first case, NNN 190, um, a total of 3,500 for uh, 2,000 for count one, 1,000 for count two, and 500 for count three. Um, for the case ending in 191, we are requesting um, a reasonable bond um, totaling 5,250 with a breakdown for count one of 2,000, 2, count two, 250, count three, 1,000, count four, 1,000, and count five, 1,000. All right. Just so you know, gentlemen, so I'm going to keep watching you. So the more I see people keep doing this, I'm going to call you out. So sit up. All right. We'll get through this as quickly as possible. What uh, says the state? Who we got? Mr. Jenkins. Good morning, Your Honor. Good, morning. Good, morning. <laughs> Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good evening, actually. All right. Um, very briefly, in uh, position one, obviously, the defendant, uh, unfortunately, is entitled to bond at this time. And so in, in uh, position 10, our request is 41000 cash. That's 25 on the theft by taking, 15 on the criminal damage to property, and 1000 on the misdemeanor. And uh, position 11, our request is 80000 cash. Uh, 25 on the theft by taking, 10,000 on the uh, possession of criminal tools, and 15 apiece for the criminal damage to property, second degree, Your Honor, uh, with the following conditions that the defendant be banned from Fulton County, that he uh, ankle monitor, 24 uh, hour curfew, no further violations, stay away orders, no contact specifically with the victims, uh, the owners of the properties in which the allegations stem from, Your Honor, in this case, any other terms and conditions you believe are appropriate. Thank you, Judge. I, I like this. Attorney Jenkins, I've seen him before. He he he's he <laughs> he's come to kick ass. He he opens up with, yeah, I I know the d defendant's uh you know eligible for a bond, unfortunately, <laughs> and then he just belts it out with his little bow tie on. I love it. Smith, does he have anywhere else he can live? No, Your Honor. That's the only address he has. All right, all right. On position ten, ending in three one zero nine. No drugs unless prescribed. No alcohol. No weapons. Stay away from one eight seven Jonesboro Road. No further contact with Emmanuel, last name B E T O T E, or Greg, last name M O Z E K E, and also Chiquita, C H I Q U I T A Hickinson or Hickson H I C K S O M. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a twenty four hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, also employment. Sir, you have to provide the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, and the exact oh, location that you will you. be working. You have to tell that to the ankle monitoring company, and you have to also let Ms. Smith know. And just so you know, sir, the state gets printouts. So if you go and hang out at Chick-fil-A all day and you're not working at Chick-fil-A, that that's a violation of your bond condition. $20,000, $10,000, $500. Let's see. Ms. Tracy, you got that? Where is Ms. Tracy? Where's I got my clerk on here? No, there, there she is. $20,000, $10,000, and then $500. All right, on position 11, ending in 3191. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county, same conditions. <clears throat> uh, court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. You have to do that. If you get your schedule on a weekly basis, turn it over on a weekly basis, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and your schedule. Stay away from 1897 Jonesboro Road. No further contact with Greg, M-O-Z-E-K-E, -E, and no further contact with Emmanuel, B-E-T-O-T-E. -E. All right. So we got 20,000, uh, 1,000 on possession of tools for a crime, 10,000 on each criminal damage to property. You get that, Ms. Tracy? One more time. 20,000, 1,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. Got it on both. All right, thank you. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. If that's all you got, Ms. Smith, you can leave. Thank you so much.
Oh, Your Honor, I will be filling in uh, for Hannah Rondon today. Oh, okay. All right. Well, here you go. <laughs> Some more. All right. Uh, Centurius Kemp. All right, Mr. Kemp, you've got five cases. All right. So one of them starts as position five, six, seven, eight, and let's see. I'm sorry, did I say five? Maybe I meant four. All right. Two two CP two one one two three five Centurius Camp two hundred forty three days without indictment. You got criminal trespass entering auto with the intent to commit a theft or a felony. Criminal trespass entering auto with a with the intent to commit a theft or a felony. Two two CP two one one two three six two hundred forty three days without indictment. Oh, and that one has no bond as of August fifth. This one also has no bond as of August fifth. Criminal trespass entering auto or motor vehicle with intent to commit a theft or a felony. Criminal trespass entering automobile with a motor vehicle with intent to commit a theft or a felony. Yes. Criminal trespass entering an automobile with intent to commit a theft or a felony. And we got position, the next one, 2-2, two, two, CP, 2-1-1-2-3-7. Two, 243 days without indictment. No bond as of August the 5th. Entering an automobile with intent to commit a theft or a felony. Criminal attempt to com entering auto. Entering automobile with intent to commit a theft or a felony. Entering auto with intent to commit a theft or a felony. We got last one here. It's 2-2, two, two, CP, 2-1-1-2-3-8. Two, 243 days without indictment. No bond as of August 5th. Theft by receiving stolen property. Great trial. The has 10 cycles. Uh, he has a 2019 receipt, possession, or transport firearm by convicted felon. He has a identity theft, fraud, and using, possessing, identifying information concerning a person in 2019. He has three counts of entering automobile or other motor vehicle while intent to commit theft or felony in 2019. And defendant has a probation violation in 2022. Nothing further. All right, go ahead, Ms. Smith. Mr. Kemp is 27 years old. He is he was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and has his whole family here in the metro area, including his grandmother, cousins, aunts, and uncles, and his wife and five children. Um, ages he does have a newborn, um, also a one, five, six, and seven year old. He does have a good address, um, which is the one that's on file um, at 955 Founders Drive Southwest, uh, where he would live with his wife. Mr. Kemp made it to the 11th grade at Thorough High School in Southwest Atlanta. Um, Mr. Kemp has been in for over, he's been in custody for over 90 days without indictment on all five cases, and he is entitled to a bond by law. Uh, for position four, we are requesting for a reasonable bond not to exceed 50000 uh, For position five, we are requesting a reasonable bond not to exceed 20000 For position six, uh, we're requesting a reasonable bond not to exceed 20000 uh, for position seven, we're also requesting a bond not to exceed um, 20000 And then for position eight, we are requesting uh, a reasonable bond not to exceed 5000 Um So for a total of 150, uh, 115, excuse me, Your Honor, um, thousand good bond. Uh, we absolutely consent to a uh, an ankle monitor um, paid for by the state. And if Your Honor would like to impose a curfew, we would just ask uh, for the usual exceptions for a medical lawyer in work so that Mr. Kemp could um, seek employment to help support his family. All right. And you're right. So you got, page the uh, fourth position was uh, behind my notes there. Let me give you what the fourth position. It's a uh, 2 cp 211234 entering automobile with intent to commit a theft or felony, possession of tools for a crime, fleeing and attempting to elude, possession of a farm during the commission of a felony, possession of a farm by a convicted felon, Theft by receiving stolen property, obstruction of a law enforcement officer, failure to signal lane change or turn, failure to obey stop signs or control devices, and driving with suspended or revoked license. What says the state? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'll try to uh, surmise this as quick as possible. Obviously, we want to make a monitor uh, on all of these positions, No, uh, the other terms, conditions, the court release appropriate. Position four, uh, we're requesting 114,000 uh, good bond. Uh, position five, uh, 32,000 good bond. Uh, position six, 48,000 uh, good bond. Position seven, 46,000 uh, good bond. And uh, position eight, uh, 10,000 good bond. Uh, obviously, no contact, no violations of the law, any other terms and conditions uh, the court deems appropriate. Stay out of Fulton County, but doesn't live in Fulton County. Um, and uh, he obviously uh, is a threat to commit additional felonies. Thank you, Joe. He's living in, Miss F in Fulton County, isn't he, ma'am? Yes. Okay, well, if he isn't, that's all. That was all my recommendation. But certainly stay away from the uh, uh, these victims and uh, incident locations, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Well, I got this one here. Hold on one second. I dropped it again. After I read from it. Hold on. Ah. <clears throat> all right. Let's see. I can find that last one there. Let me see. We'll st let me start with position five, and then we'll come back to position four, Miss Tracy. All right, position five. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Marcus Weathersby, W-E-A-T-H-E-R-S-B-Y. No further contact with Lauren Smith. 
No further contact with Garrett Anderson. Stay away from 10890 Haynes Bridge Road in Alpharetta. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew except for court, lawyer, and medical. So we'll do a 5,000, 10,000, 5,000, and 10,000. On possession six, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. And that also have a, and they'll go back, there'll be an ankle monitor on all these, Miss Tracy. Ankle monitor with a 24-hour curfew except for court, lawyer, medical, employment, as long as you supply the name of your employment, place of, place of employment, a schedule in the exact location you're going to be working, sir. You have to do that. If you don't supply the location you're going to be working, it's going to be a violation of your probation. Come on. All right, criminal trespass, 5,000. Entering auto, 10. Five, 10 on each entering auto and 5 on each criminal trespass. Position 7, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You're an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. You have to supply that every time, sir, to the ankle monitoring company and to your, uh, and to your public defender, Ms. Rondon. No further contact with, let's see what I got here, Ryan. Thelman, T-H-E-L-L-M-A-N, stay away from 10890 Haines Bridge Road in Alpharetta. No further contact with Gavin Johnson. No further contact with Chad McLean Evans, M-C-L-A-N-E Evans. Stay away from 8000 Avalon Boulevard in Alpharetta. Stay away from 1081 North Point Circle in Alpharetta. It's probably good you just stay out of Alpharetta. How about that, too? Also, stay out of Alpharetta. <laughs> Avalon. Okay, no further contact with Joshua Lumson, L-U-M-S-D-O-N, and stay away from 2300 Lakewood Place in Alpharetta. Entering auto, 10,000. Criminal attempt, 5,000. Entering auto, 10. Entering auto, 10. And then on the last case, before we go back to position four, it doesn't seem to be wanting to pop up for me here. Uh, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Rashid Wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y. Stay away from 909 Ponce de Leon. No further contact with D-E-V-I Weber, W-E-B-E-R. Ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, and medical. Employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule in the exact location you're going to be working. All right. Now for position four. It's paper. 10,000 on entering auto. 5,000 on possession of a crime. Then uh, 15,000 on DUI, fleeing and attempting to elude. 15 on possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. 15,000 on possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. 2,000 on misdemeanors, theft by receiving stolen property. 5,000 on obstruction. 1,000 on failure to signal lane change. 1,000 on failure to obey traffic control devices. 2,000 on driving on suspended license. And 5,000 on reckless driving. No driving <clears throat> during the pendency of this case. No drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, and the exact location you'll be working. <clears throat> supply that to the ankle monitor company and to your lawyer. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lead the base. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll also be sending it. Yes, ma'am. On position eight, the theft I received the solar property, I didn't hit the bottom I don't know. You really should. Chick Chick fil A is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three thousand. And all these that have more than I'll send I'll send this one included uh Miss Smith. Judge, what was the last one you said? Three thousand? That's on the position eight was three thousand? Yeah, three thousand, yes, ma'am. But I'll be sending these up to uh Miss Bonnie so she'll see that that one's a pretty old case. All right, uh let's see. Dante Bell. All right, it's his position twenty two two seven excuse me, this is two one CP two zero five three seven four. 467 days down and there is a $155,000 good bond as of December the 5th on possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Uh, entering auto, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and I guess I'll Oh, I'm sorry, and there's 21, 21CP205375. Theft by receiving stolen property, same thing, 467 days. Yes, defendant appears to have no criminal history at this time, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Smith. Um, in your honor, position 21 and in N375. Oh, I'm sorry, that was dismissed. Yep. Yes. Yep. That is my note on there. Yep. So that one doesn't exist, just position 20. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, I, so I, Mr. Bell, um, he is 28 my, years old. He's a lifelong resident of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, everyone in his family, um, his paternal and his maternal side, they live here in the metro area. He has two children, ages 9 and 10, who also live um, in the area. 
Um, he did make it to the 10th grade at Banneker High School in College Park. He has a good address on file, um, which is the 1250 Donnelly Avenue address, where he would be able to live with his grandfather, Dennis Thomas. Um, I know, Your Honor, that you do read all of the warrants on the cases, um, uh, which are on the calendar, but I did want to point out that the co-defendant in this case is the one that was actually accused of firing um, one shot into the air and not Mr. Bell. Um, Mr. Bell, he has been oh, no, in custody no, no, no. for over five years now. Um, the alleged incident in uh, 467 involved, days. What did you say, Your Honor? You said over five years, 467 days on these charges. Yes. So, Your Honor. Um, he was at DMC. I understand that. But. Right, right. So he was booked in, in Rice Street um, February 15, 2018. Um, and then he went. Yeah, to DLC on the other charges. Um, you missed all the COVID. However, the case here has been open <laughs> um, since 2018. Um, I'm not entirely sure why he wasn't officially booked on these warrants until December 23rd of 2021, since he was already in custody when they uh, were sworn out. Um, <clears throat> so going by the date of the warrants, then he was in custody for those 1,868 days. But even if we do go by the date of the arrest, Mr. Bell has still been in custody for the 467 days without indictment. Um, given the facts of this case um, and the extensive amount of time that Mr. Bell has been in right. custody, me, uh, I am requesting the court to reduce this bond significantly. Um, I'm asking for count one to be reduced to 5,000, count two reduced to 1,000, count three reduced to 5,000, count four reduced to 9,000 for the total bond to equal 20,000 good bond. And we are okay with keeping the conditions um, attached for Mr. Bell's bond order from December 5th of 2022. All right. What says the state? Thank you, Judge. Uh, briefly, Judge, we are, you can certainly uh, add this to the list that you sent, Madam DA, uh, in connection with uh, the amount of time this case has been open, even though certainly the defendant's been in the uh, Department of Corrections uh, for some other matters. Um, the state's willing to uh, agree to a reduction in count two, entering auto to 5,000, and then count uh, three, possession of firearm by a convicted felon um, to 10,000. Uh, in this case, uh, all remaining charges, uh, though, uh, stay the same. And uh, all of the terms and conditions you believe are appropriate, Judge. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No for the contact with Russell Elliott and James Andrews. Stay away from 4960 John Boulevard in College Park. Uh, no, well, I already said no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. You can have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, and also employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working, sir. You have to tell the ankle monitoring company and Miss Rondon where you're going to be going so that they can keep up with it. So I've got count one, 10,000, count two, 5,000, count three, 10,000, and count four, 40,000. So I got 10,000, 5,000, 10,000, 40,000. Best of luck to you, sir. Maybe I can take a picture of one of the booths and then put it up as a background. You can lay the booth. <laughs> All right, I got uh, Nikhil Daniels. Raise your hand if you're Nikhil Daniels. There we go. 22 CP 214574. 115 days without indictment. Got VGCSA possession controlled substance in schedule one or two with intent to distribute and trafficking in illegal drugs. Looks like the warrant said 66 grams of fentanyl and 115.5 kilos of methamphetamines. Great trial. Yes. Number one. Uh, Ma'am, Valerie Reed, whoever's got this picture of this child, take that off. I don't want a picture of a child on here. Period. Picture of the kid that's your little screensaver, your background. Take that off of there. We can't have that. Yes, uh, position one. I think it was one of the add-ons. Your, your Honor, Matt Hurst here for um, Alexis Gibbs with that picture. She uh, has an error message that says the host has cut off her camera. Yeah, because she's going to have to change her background because she tried to do that so we couldn't see her house, but I don't want to see a kid because her background was of her child, and we, we don't need that streaming live. Right. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, so she needs to change it. <laughs> I don't know if she knows how. I don't know. We can't see that. We can't have that child on here, though. Yeah. That's, that's just not really good at where we're at. Just you know? want to to behave today. Um, I'll, I'll try to get her to cut her camera on for her to be present. She's got a case on her anyway. Well, I but understand, I but she's got to just change. It can't be that black. She put that background on there, so she ought to know kind of how to change it. But <laughs> okay. I just, I just, I just took it off and said ask. But don't. She doesn't need to put it on with that child on there. Yes, All right. Go we'll ahead. I got Jones. So I've got a uh, McKeel McDaniel. Two one fifteen days. So yeah, I read it off. Who's here? It's got uh, Matthew Moans. Stuart Moans. Thanks. There you go. Mr. Daniels, Your Honor. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, he, he previously was granted a bond of 200000 in the possession with intent and 500000 in the trafficking. He currently has a hold by the U.S. Marshals for, he, he's on supervised release in federal court. 
Um, the, the bond is simply unmakeable. If he were to make bond, he would remand to the custody of the federal court and be brought over to the federal building on a um, revocation of supervised release over there. Um, I would just ask the court to recognize that he's, he's already been found to be worthy of the bond under the Ayala factors. The, the main issue is whether he's going to show up at court. He will not be released under any set of circumstances. So I'd ask the court to have the bond amounts that he's already got. Um, again, he won't be able to post that. And if he did, he would not be released. He would just be simply remanded over to federal custody. And when it was time for him to come back to Fulton, uh, assuming the proper writs were, were filed, he would come back here. All right. What says the state? Uh, Judge, uh, at this time, uh, we request you deny defense counsel's motion uh, for no change in the bond amount that has already been granted in this case. And I do anticipate uh, that this uh, defendant will be charged federal lease in the near future. And so, and there is a hold on him as he's not going anywhere. So right now, we just request you deny defense counsel's motion. Thank you. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Where's he going to live, uh, counsel? Your Honor, the address would be, I'm sorry, I have it right Obviously, here. If the Can I kick him out of Fulton County? Why don't you just, why don't you just say it? You don't know, but. Well, he would live in, um, the truth is he would live at Love Boy, Lovejoy Detention Center down in Jonesboro until the feds were done with him. But uh, the address, if he were released, would be um, 9767 Winding Way Lane in Jonesboro. He's engaged. He has a fiance. Um, he would live with her. He's engaged. That's my understanding. But like I said. So someone wants to get hitched to this keeper. Uh, the, the the fact of the matter is, I think he has six or seven well, years left on supervised release uh, and a previous federal conviction, uh, and he would he would be in detention in Lovejoy until that were resolved. All right, let's see. The worse, the better. All right. So we got no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay out of Fulton County. The only reason you come to Fulton County is court or to see your lawyer. Uh, you got to have an ink monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment once you get out from the feds if you can get a job as long as you buy a proof of employment, name of employer, and the exact location you're going to be working. Also, stay away from 250 Far Road in Atlanta. Once you get released from your federal hold, sir, you'll have 48 hours to have that ankle monitor placed on your ankle. If not, you will have – that would be a violation of one of your bond conditions. So, this guy's nice night, 150000 and 450000 100000 on count one, five, 450000 on count two. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, Judge. May I be excused? Yes, sir. You can leave the booth, sir. Your Honor, Giovanna Smith speaking. And may I be excused? Oh, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Have a great evening, Your Honor. All right. You too. Who else is there in Cobb? Ms. Robinson? Judge, that's going to be Rainey. Okay. Dakari Rainey, position two. 448 they, days without indictment. They all go you to Waffle House. Two, two, CP, 20576. <laughs> Seven, four hundred forty-eight days. Let's see, seventy thousand uh, dollars bond as of. They did not as do far that. as I can tell. Six twenty-seven. Burglary in the first degree. And theft by taking felony. Preach, Rob. <laughs> defendant has four cycles. Defendant has a aggravated battery that was a first offender act that was deferred in two thousand and eighteen. Defendant has a robbery that was a first offender act deferred in two thousand and eighteen. Defendant has two probation violations in two thousand and twenty-one. And nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Okay, Judge Brian Olive uh, here representing Mr. Rainey. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, Mr. Rainey's 22 years old. He's a lifelong Georgia resident. So his entire family is here. Um, a good address for him to go to would be 601 Sonoya uh, Road. That's Fairburn, Georgia, 30213. Um, he would be staying there with his mother um, and his younger brother. Uh, he made it through the 11th grade. He wants to get his GED once he's out. Um, and he was working in the Applebee's. Um, prior to incarceration and he was actually shot so he wasn't able to work but he could easily return there once he gets out um with this request a reasonable bond this judge hasn't been able to do this um there's another case in which he's indicted um it's kind of i think slipped through the cracks uh, uh there's been an issue with his attorney in that when i've contacted the powers that be uh regarding getting him an attorney assigned and that sort of thing but he's just been sitting there with that case as well um you know just case thinking, number? i guess uh, just uh 22 SC one eight two four zero five. And there's not a um, there's not an attorney assigned there. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a C three. That's no longer a C three. So oh, you know which judge it's assigned to. Um, one moment, judge. Or I guess I could have looked it up. That'd probably be. No, I got it right here. I got it right here. Um, uh, judge Dunaway. Okay, I'll make sure I uh, follow up with uh, Judge Dunaway and kind of put it on his uh, his radar so that he can follow up on. I appreciate that. Sure. But yeah, we just we would just ask for the lowest amount possible because obviously he's been incarcerated for a long time. He doesn't have any money. So all right. Uh, 
All right, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Judge. Uh, briefly, Judge, we'll agree to a reduction by 20000 to 50000 a good bond. And then certainly, I already brought this to the session earlier today to Kenneth Hutcherson, uh, as you can do as well, Judge, in connection with your list to Madam DA, if this indicted, since he's got an open case in Dunaway. Okay. All right. No drugs unless prescribed. No alcohol. No weapons. No further contact with Darian, D-A-R-R-I-A-N, excuse me, Walker. Stay away from 237 Bay Street in Fairburn. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, the exact location, you'll be working in a schedule. You have to do that on an ongoing basis to the ankle monitoring company and also to um, your public defense or your C3. Best of luck. Uh, let's see what I'm going to do. Uh, sorry, get ahead of myself. 20,000 on count one, 10,000 on count two. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lead the booth. Thank you, Judge. All right. I got Benjamin Gascott. Benjamin Gascott. Wave your hand if you're Benjamin Gascott. Go on, good evening, good evening, Your Honor. This is Hackboy Botabi, counsel for Mr. Gascot. Gotcha. Benjamin Gascot, wave your hand. Nope. All right, we're moving to the next one. David Your Honor, I was saying this is Hackboy Botabi. Well, I understand you, but your client's not in the booth. Client, nobody waved their hand, so your client's not in the booth. Do you want to wave their presence? Do you want to wave your client's presence? You're on mute, sir. Sorry, Anna. I think I should hold on a little bit. He was okay. supposed to have been produced, but I would <laughs> Okay, so, so here it is. So we got, got so many booths and so Talking many deputies, so I skip it when they're not in the booth because other people are waiting, and then people fill in as people leave. Yeah. But. Okay, you see what's happening? Okay. Okay. All right, David Reed. Wave your hand if you're David Reed. There we go. All right, Mr. Ollick, this is position 15, 22, CP, 213, 814, 147 days without indictment, no bond on robbery by intimidation. Free trial. Bostic 2.0. Oh, good lord. That is sweet and touching. I just lost I can my tell Bostic train. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Your Honor. I'm sorry about that. Um, we're going to have six cycles. The defendant has a 2021 20, misdemeanor simple battery family violence conviction, and then he has an FTA in 2021. And nothing further. All right. All right, Judge. Um, yeah, Mr. Reed is 19 years old. Uh, he's a lifelong Georgia resident. Um, the address on file is a good address of the court. We have to know he'd be staying in Fulton County, I'm sorry, Fayette County. Uh, should he receive a bond? He'd be staying there with his mother, his sisters, his brother, and his daughter. Um, he does have, again, the one daughter, uh, his name is old that he'll take care of. Um, is he graduated from high school? Um, he was a manager at Little Caesars before he was incarcerated, and he believes he can return there. Um, he also attends and uh, volunteers at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Um, he, uh, his uh, mother and grandmother are here online in support of him. Um, there are some image issues that uh, are in effect here, but they are being addressed. Um, and um, he he does deny these allegations, Judge. Um, and uh, his family is able, they can't really afford more than a $5,000 bond, Judge. So I would just ask the court not to exceed $5,000. Thank you. What Thank you. says the state? Thank you, Judge. Uh, state's recommendation in this matter will be a $50,000 uh, cash bond with following conditions, ankle monitor, 24-hour curfew, no contact with the victim, uh, ban from Fulton County is going to be in Fayette. Um, let's see here, no further violations of the law, certainly and stay away from the incident location, Judge. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, no further contact with... S O E, excuse me, S O L E D A D, last name A N O K U. I could have swore I saw somebody on here with that name. Maybe not. All right. And no further contact, your co defendant, Malik, M E L Y K, last name Folds, F O L D S. You're going to have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, and employment. Before this uh, call is over, there's an ankle monitor not paid for by the county. Watch out for it. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you'll be working. That will also include any kind of mental health treatment. Stay out of Fulton County. The only way you can come to Fulton County, sir, is court and see your lawyer. Don't get a flat tire. Don't run out of gas. Fill up a gas in Fayette County before you come to Fulton County. Pack snacks in your cars. I don't even want you to stop and get snacks. $40,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, Judge. All right, no snacks. All right Robert Koselka. Is that it? Koselka? Yes, Judge. Robert Koselka. Wave your hand if you're Robert. Nope. All right, moving on. Milford Daniels. <laughs> there we go. Milford Daniels. 
Okay. We got position 14, 22, CP, 213797. 147 days without indictment, aggravated assault, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. $80,000 good bond oh, as of November the 8th. Great trial. The defendant has 29 cycles. The defendant has a altering, forgery, counterfeiting motor vehicle certificate and title in 2000. The defendant has a FTA in 2001. The defendant has a probation violation in 2001. The defendant has two misdemeanor simple battery convictions in 2005. And nothing further, Your Honor. All right. What's, Mr. Rowland, go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Um, yeah, Mr. Uh, Daniels has lived in Georgia his entire life. Uh, he has his wife and his daughter and his grandchildren here. He helps take care of all of them. Um, high school graduate. Um, he was working at Atlanta Metropolitan, Metropolitan uh, Auto Shop as a master mechanic. Um, he does neighborhood volunteer work where he works on the neighborhood uh, uh, residents' cars and things to that effect for free. Um, the address on file is a good address. Um, there, yeah, it, again, this bond is so high. It, obviously, he hasn't been able to afford up to this point. So he's been in there for a long time without being indicted. We're just asked a bond not to exceed 25000 All right. What's the other state? Thank you, Josh. Uh, State briefly uh, requested the court deny defense counsel's bond, uh, yep, it's motion for bond reduction in this case. We think it's appropriate with the defendant's given history. And uh, um, that's what caused the uh, the thumbnail. We, we, we've got a gang member, an alleged gang member. I, I think I think it is one. And uh, he's got private counsel and she says you can pay for your own ankle monitor. Yes, uh, the allegations in this case, merely allegations, of course, but with his uh, criminal history and likelihood to commit other fi- felonies in this matter, uh, we hope you deny defense counsel's motion at this time, Judge. Thank you. All right, I'm going to make some changes here. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. We have an address where he's going to live because the incident location is the address he gave. Mr. Olaf? Well, he ain't, um, he ain't going there. I believe that's at his house. Um, so was the alleged where I believe that someone in the, the, the allegations was somebody in the neighborhood. Um, so how do we know? That's that, from what I, would, I mean, from what I understand, that the, the the alleged victim is a resident in the neighborhood there. All right. Okay. So you stay away from three one four East Rhine Hill as long as it's not where the other people live. How about that? Okay. So if those folks don't live there. You could go back there. Okay, sir. But like, not that I wouldn't believe you if you told me, but you know, I don't have proof. So. If they don't live there, you can go back there. So, uh, Miss Tracy, just make sure you say if the uh, alleged victims, no further contact with R.B. Moss, M-O-S-S, or Antoine Moss, M-O-S-S, if they don't live at 314 East Ron Hill, then he can go back there. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, the exact location you're going to be working in a schedule. Sir, you have to supply that to your lawyer and to the ankle monitoring company each and every time you get your schedule. Uh, and looks like, uh, because before... The previous judge said stay away from East Ron Hill Road. But since you say, so since I made some changes, I'll make a little bit of adjustment to the bond. 20,000, 20,000, 10,000, and 10,000. 20,000, 20,000, 10, and 10. Got that, Miss Tracy? Got it. All right. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lay the booth. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. What about Christian Alexander James? Mr. James. There we go. Position 19. Uh, let's see. This is 22 CP 211408. 236 days without indictment. No bond as of August the 12th. Aggravated assault. Possession of firearm during the commission of an attempt to commit certain felonies. Uh, receipt, possession, or transport of a firearm by a convicted or a first offender. Looks like this one was reset from February due to the client, the um, Mr. James being in medical. You hear Mr. Lalco? Uh, yes, preach. I am. All right. Preach. Rah. Defendant has 29 cycles. Defendant has 29 I, I don't know what's happening here. You got it, 2.0? Uh, what, yes. Um, Hope you're not asleep, 7 North. Move two. Uh, 
Yeah. Ready, Your Honor. Um, defendant has nine cycles. Defendant has an FTA in 2016. Defendant has a misdemeanor giving false name, address, or birth date to law enforcement officer in 2018. Defendant has a probation violation in 2018. Defendant has two FTAs in 2018. And then defendant has a probation violation in 2020. And nothing further, Your Honor. So it would probably help. I know that I sent uh, Bostic who, you know, well, you know, Bostic. I sent her the rotation so you'd have a good idea. Would you like to copy that? Yes, that would be so helpful. Thank you, Judge. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, hold on, let me find you. That's the nice right, version. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Long. Shit you do. <laughs> yes, Mr. Uh, James is age 25. He was born here in Atlanta, has lived here the entire life with his extended family. Uh, he has one uh, one child, a, a year, uh, one-year-old girl. Uh, he's working on his GED, and he applied to continue it while he was uh, incarcerated, but he's still on the waiting list for that. Uh, before that, though, he did get to the 10th grade. He was working at the warehouse for Fresh Express in Morrow, Georgia, uh, for about five to six months before he was arrested. <clears throat> and the address on file is good. That is here in Fulton County in Atlanta on McWilliams Road. Um, as you yourself uh, pointed out, he was put in medical a few weeks ago, um, and that's because he was actually attacked in the jail. Someone had stabbed him in his uh, hand, so it's not a safe oh. place for him to stay there in jail. He has other medical issues, and he needs surgery in that hand because he currently cannot move his hand uh, almost at all. Uh, so we're requesting a jail. total of uh, $30,000, $10,000 on each charge uh, so that he can get out and get, take care of his medical needs caused by his uh, incarceration. All right. What says the state? Thank you, Judge. Very briefly, uh, we're looking for a 55000 total bond. 25 on the assault, uh, 15 on the possession of firearm uh, during commission, and uh, 15 by uh, uh, for a uh, convicted felon or for first offender probationer for a total of 55,000. Obviously, no contact, 24 uh, hour curve, free ankle monitor, you know, terms and conditions the court needs appropriate. So he's going to live in Fulton County on McDaniel Street? Uh, McWilliams Williams Road. Williams. Woo, what's the address he's going to live there? Because this is the incident here is 846. Uh, yeah, that's the address I have for him as well. well that'd be a big negative because I think that's where the alleged victim lives too. So that'd be a big old negative on living there. Because <laughs> I do know that it's his mother's address. Uh, well, and and if it's his mother, he absolutely ain't going to go there. Mm -hmm. If his mother is Kendra McCready and there's an ag assault charge and it's his mother, oh, he ain't going back there. <laughs> uh, I have his mother as Demetrius Freeman. All right, well, who, uh, Kendra McCready, I mean, she live in there? I do not know. All right, well, so we're going to do a stay away from there until we find out if she does or if she doesn't, and then, Mr. Law, you can amend it and let me know, okay, in the state, of course. All right. Oh, All right, so you. it's no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Kendra, K-E-N-D-R-A, McCready, M-C-C-R-I-T-T-Y. Stay away from 846 McWilliams Road, Southeast. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew except for court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Let's see. Uh, what it says here. Did I? Trying to figure out, because this is telling her to live. Sir, does she live there? Okay, so in the beginning, I said I need a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You don't need to be acting like that at your mama's house if that happened, allegedly, anyway. All right. So we'll move the 846 because this said kept her from around the area. Sorry, you can't be telling somebody if you do allegedly to leave the area and leave the area of your home. If it's somebody your mama wants there, you let her mama let you let them be there. And then come on. Like I said, court lawyer, medical and employment. Supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, is scheduled, exact location you'll be working. You have to give that to Mr. Law and to the ankle monitoring company. 25 count one, 15, and then 15. 25,000, 15,000, 15,000. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. I'll put that one on my list there, Mr. Law. I see. Did uh, Robert Koselka come in? Robert Koselka? No, what about Benjamin no. Gascott? Not yet? All right. Or what about uh, Davina Barber? All right, here we go. Uh, position 16, 22, CP, 214172, Davina Barber, 133 days out of indictment, $25,000 on aggravated assault. Preach. Yes, defendant has two cycles. Defendant has one FTA in 2022 and no convictions. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Law. Yes, Your, <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Barber is age 22. He was born and lived here in Atlanta awesome. his entire life with extended family. Uh, he lives with his grandmother and his niece, and he's a primary caregiver for both of them. Uh, he's been through the 10th grade. He's looking to get a GED. And uh, like my last client, uh, the waiting list in the jail is very long, uh, so it's best to get outside of the jail. Uh, he was working as a Kroger associate uh, before his arrest, and the address on file in, on Mount Zion Road in Stockbridge is correct. That's his, mother's, uh, that's his family's address. 
Um, he has a very limited history, as you heard. He's only got one FTA, and he does have uh, medical issues. So requesting a uh, that the bond be reduced to fifteen thousand dollars, so he can get his GED, work on his medical needs, and uh, get back to work. All right. What says the state? Your Honor, we're willing to uh, consent to a reduction of five thousand for a total of twenty thousand dollars. All terms and conditions stay the same, Your Honor. What's the amount you said? Uh, twenty thousand, Your Honor. Okay. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No for the contact with Jonathan Freeman. Stay out of, let's see, stay out of Polk County this year for court or to see your lawyer. Fill up with gas, make sure you got air in your tires. Put snacks in your car. Don't stop for a snack in Polk County. That way you don't need to stop anywhere except at the courthouse or to see your lawyer. All right? All right, you got an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you spot the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and exact location, you're going to be working. Also, stay away from 400 Thomasville Boulevard, which shouldn't be a problem because that's in Fulton County. Best of luck to you, sir. $20,000. You can leave the booth. All right, what about Tyrone Lindsay? All right, I know this is a, an additional case. So this is a 22CP214965, Tyrone Lindsay. 779 days without indictment, but not just this case. This is an additional case. Um, right in a penal institution in aggravated assault. There's no bond as of December the 29th. Free trial. It's going to have six cycles. It's going to have two FTAs in 2016. It's going to have a back property stolen property in 2022. Defendant has a unlawful for person employee associate with criminal street gang to conduct, participate in criminal activity in 2022. And defendant has a interference with government property in 2022. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Baskin. Uh, good evening, Your Honor. Um, yes, for uh, the record, Your Honor, the criminal interference government property, the 22 CP207737, that case uh, was dismissed um, before going any further. I wanted to just clarify that for the court. Um, Mr. Lindsay is currently serving a three-year sentence um, on case number 21 SC177897, um, running concurrent with two other cases, Your Honor. Those cases are 18 SC160800 and 21 SC177370. Um, that commenced on February 9th, 2021. He was sentenced to serve all of that time at the Fulton County Jail, Your Honor, um, where he had picked up this and another additional charge. Um, he's not flight risk, Your Honor, as he would be um, still serving um, a, a sentence at the jail. Um, he's not a threat to himself or others. He does um, did grow up here in Atlanta, lives here. His, his mother is here as well. Fantastic. Yes, he's currently not a flight risk because he's serving on another charge. Okay. As his uh, young daughter. Um, at this time, Your Honor, we're just asking for a reasonable bond to be set so that if we are able to do something with the sentence of the illegal sentence of three years at um, the Fulton County Jail, Your Honor, that he would be allowed to be um, make bond on his other cases. And he does have bond on 22 CP210857, Your Honor. So this is the only matter um, that he does not have a bond at this time. All right. What says the state? Your Honor, we'll... Uh Recommend uh, both counts 50,000 uh, good bond, uh, no contact uh, for the violations of the law. So for a total of 100K, good bond. And where's he going to live when he gets out, Ms. Beskin? Uh, he'd be living with his mother, Your Honor, and I believe that address is uh, 2132 Briar Glen Lane. That's B-R-I-A-R-G-L-E-N Lane, Atlanta, Georgia, 30331. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Sir, you have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, the exact location you'll be working. No further contact with Cedric. No relation to me, Manning. No relation to me is not his middle name, but Cedric Manning, which is no relation to this Manning. Uh, no further contact with your co-defendant, Jabari Porter, J-A-B-A-R-I, Porter, P-O-R-T-E-R. And on employment, sir, you got to supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, exact location you'll be working. Like I said, um, the, the state does get copies of the report, so they'll be watching where you're going. Can't go down to Chick-fil-A for three or four hours, sir. 50,000 count one, 50,000 count two. Best of luck to you, sir. I'll go ahead and send that one to Madam DA, too, Ms. Beskin, so hopefully they can get them all together and y'all can come to a global resolution. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Your Honor. It's only matter before the court this evening may be excused. Absolutely. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Benjamin Gascott, did you come in? He's not, Your Honor. I'm going to wave. I'm going to wave presence, Your Honor. <laughs> You're anxious, right? Okay. I thought I was, I was keeping you company. All right. Position one, <laughs> two, three, CP, two, one, five, one, three, nine. Benjamin Gascott. 91 days without indictment. No bond as of January the 1st. False statements, criminal trespass. Free trial. That then it appears to have no um, prior criminal history, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, counsel. Good evening, Your Honor, and uh, thanks thanks for the for the opportunity. Mr. Gascott was arrested at uh, sometime in January 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> for false uh, statements that uh, he was alleged to have made during an interview with uh, the officer, as well as criminal trespass. As you rightly acknowledge, he's been there for 90 days, and per 
OCGA 7, 17750, he is entitled to bail. Your Honor, he poses no uh, threat to uh, any individual in the community property. Uh, he doesn't pose any significant, significant uh, risk of flight. He's married with two children, uh, resides in Gwinnett County. Hold on one second. Thumbs down, booth three. Stop picking the zits. We don't pick zits. We don't pick our hair. Right, there you go. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Go ahead, counsel. Thank you, Honor. So he, as I was saying, he 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 had two jobs before he was arrested. He works as a, as a freelance music consultant and did Uber. He, the wife also works. He supports his family. Currently, he's out of, uh, of funds. He suffers a medical condition. Um, and, uh, Your Honor, as the court would, would realize, uh, the two charges for which he's being charged are uh, criminal trespass under OCGA 16721. The maximum fine for that charge is $1,000, as well as false statement, uh, for felony false statement under 161020. The maximum fine for that charge as well is $1,000 with imprisonment from one to five years. So we are asking for the uh, defendant to be released on his own uh, recognizance. Uh, otherwise, we would we would accept a we would we wouldn't mind if the charge the court uh, says born at two thousand uh, dollars. Granted, the fact that uh, even if he were to be convicted, he won't pay anything more than two thousand dollars. So uh, we we would ask that the state uh, release him on his own recognizance. Do you live in Buford, Georgia? Yes, he lives in. Uh, okay, I just needed that because if you could put his change of address, but that's what I saw on there. Go ahead, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Judge. Uh, in this case, Judge, it appears. Um, that this matter is still under investigation. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like that uh, there could be a sexual assault lurking behind these charges. And Yo. as a result of such, uh, in this case, the state's recommendation on count one would be $100,000 cash. Uh, count two would be $50,000 cash with no contact. The defendant be banned from uh, <clears throat> Fulton County. I'm concerned the nature of uh, his contact with this victim was through Uber. And so I have a concern in connection with him continuing uh, that line of work while he is addressing this case, um, that he have an ankle monitor, 24 hour curfew. Uh, and that would be consistent obviously with the concern uh, regarding the um, Uber driving, um, no contact uh, and uh, any other terms and conditions uh, the court deems appropriate in this matter. All right. Your Honor, may we respond please? Okay. You know, we don't see uh, the, the 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 fact that the investigation there's an investigation uh, ongoing or the likelihood of a second charge as a condition for bond. At that point, the state can exercise its, its right to retake him, indict him. But right now, he's being accused of two charges and two charges only, and the court cannot move beyond those two charges and set bond on, in, uh, based on a consideration of a likely likelihood of a charge. And so we are asking the court to circumspect his, his decision solely on the issues before the court. He's been charged with uh, trespass and and uh, false, statements. False, false statements. So, um, and as we just mentioned, the maximum punishment financially is $1,000 each. So uh, the basis for which bond is issued is not on the likelihood of the defendant being indicted uh, because either way, the state knows that he retains the presumption of innocence, even for the charges for which we're talking about. And worse still, the, 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 the philosophy and our practice, uh, we must stress this if we have the opportunity, is not to keep people in jail until when the state thinks it's convenient to have them tried. It's to give them the chance to release them on bond, secure that bond with an amount to compel their pres presence, and give them the chance to prepare for their trial, subpoena witnesses, retain an attorney, and appear in court when needed. So the state has not provided any evidence at all as to why Mr. Benjamin should not be awarded a bond at a maximum of 2,000, let alone on his own recognizance. And we, we think that at this point, he is entitled to bond on the charges for which he's being charged. We don't mind if the court imposes a, a, a monitor uh, at this point at, at the at cost of the state, but we don't think the, the requirement of 100,000 and 50,000, and even if he was found guilty of these offenses, they don't warrant an amount that's beyond and above what a, a criminal defendant where he's found guilty will be fined by the court. That's excessive bill and is outlawed by the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. We need to make that clear to the state. Okay. Well, and also look at the, you know, read the reports because there was an allegation of rape and I guess he's an Uber driver and you know, goes into her house and then makes a statement about how he's going to her house. However, we won't get into all that right now. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no weapons, no. no weapons. No further contact with Natalie, B-E-R-S-T-C-H. Stay away from 1125 Hammond Drive in Sandy that's, Springs. That's Stay out of Fulton County. The only reason you come to Fulton County is court or to see your lawyer. No more work in any sort of ride share service. He can find another job. He can find another job. So no ride share working. An ankle monitor with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, 
medical, employment, as long as he supplies the name of his employer, proof of employment, a location he's going to be working, and a schedule. But the location he's going to be working isn't Lyft, Uber, or any other ride share. So make sure he stays out of Fulton County, sir. He didn't come here. He didn't stop. That That is interesting to me. I didn't I didn't catch this part. I, I just had this uh, going. I, I didn't catch that, but it's interesting. So she, for, for two reasons, I didn't know that she, they could ban from a type of work. So no ride share work, which I think makes sense. I, I really do. And then she does it on the suggestion of the, the prosecutor that he's being um, investigated for that. That charge isn't out there. Having said that, uh, you know, if the, if this prosecutor has any credibility with the judge, and he clearly does, uh, Judge Manning doesn't want to be responsible for letting uh, some predator out, uh, going over to Lyft and doing it again. He get gas. He doesn't get a snack. He can put snacks in his car when he comes here. 25,000 count one, 5,000 count two. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anna. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Thank you. Judge, when you have a moment, can we visit position number nine? Lieutenant Conklin needs to make an announcement on position number nine, which was Cascella. Cascella, yeah, I keep calling it. Robert Cascella. Yes, I Judge. I think it's Taco. It's taco. I mean, no matter how you spell it or say it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes um, apparently uh, staff is in contact with Mr. Cascella, and he's refusing to uh, come to court. He's aware that he's supposed to be in Orca court, but he's refusing to leave the cell. Well, uh, Mr. Oweth, oh, and let's see, where was... I'll waive the presence of the court allow. It, 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 there's some serious image issues here, Judge. Um, and uh, even interviewing him, it was hard to get some information, basic information out of him. Oh, so, how did you um, know? Yeah, speaking of that, where is, um, oh, did that last lawyer just leave? I believe he Yes, did. Judge, he did. Okay, well, there's an outstanding warrant right now for rape. So that was issued on 214. It shows up on Odyssey, so he won't get out anyway. Hopefully his lawyer will tell him. <clears throat> so you just want to go ahead without him? Oh, yes, Judge. All right. Position 9, 22CP, 2, 212986. 2, 179 days without indictment, aggravated assault, and battery. No bond as of October the 8th. Free trial. Yes, the defendant has one cycle out of Georgia. He's a multi state offender, but um, is for us for the case today. Sure did. He has six cycles out of Michigan, um, just like a DUI conviction in 1976. And you say 76? That, yeah, that's way too far back. <laughs> um, he has one cycle out of Alabama, no conviction. He has two cycles out of California, and those are older as well. Um, I don't know if you want those. He um, has 30 cycles out of Tennessee. Um, he has a FTA out of 2009, has aggravated assault in 2010, a misdemeanor criminal trespass in 2013, an FTA in 2014, an FTA in 2015. He has a misdemeanor assault of officer, fear of bodily injury in 2020, and then a misdemeanor assault, bodily injury in 2021. Nothing further. And I'm sorry, what state were those in? Those, like, those in Tennessee. Okay. Thank you. All right, go ahead. All right, Judge. Uh, Mr. Kasaka, as I spoke, mentioned earlier, uh, he's, it, was, it was kind of hard to get information from him. Um, I'm contacting the, our you know, client services, special services unit, and trying to get in touch with him uh, to move forward with getting him some help because I genuinely believe that uh, Fulton County is not the place for him. <laughs> Have you ever had a failure to appear? Possibly. Um, and uh, Fulton County isn't the place for him. Well, the judge will agree with him on that. And this is this judge. We would just ask for a reasonable bond um, and, and, you know, we'll work on getting them, try to transfer it out later on. All right. What says the state? Your Honor, State uh, will recommend twenty thousand on the uh, aggravated assault and one thousand on the battery for a total of twenty one thousand. Good bond, Your Honor. No contact, uh, no violations. Uh, ankle monitor if he's released. Um, uh, no further violation of the law. No alcohol or any uh, substances, uh, illicit substances, Your Honor. And um, stay from from the arrest or incident location as well as the victim. All right. So, um, is, is he going to live in Fulton County? Um. I think I could get a good address, Judge. I don't, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think, all right, I was waiting on this one to pull up. I think he had. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have to look it up because I think on this booking sheet it may, may have said he was homeless. Yeah, I believe I believe that's probably the case, Judge. Just, again, it's it was very hard to get any kind of information out of him. Okay. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Deshaun. D E S H A W N Sims S I M S. Stay away from 1420 Peachtree Street Northeast. No further contact with Brittany Mercer, M E R C E R N. I didn't have a first name on this one, but it just said Miss Cheney, C H A N E Y. Have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, uh, and any mental health treatment program that you get him into. So it'll be 20,000 count one, 1,000 count two. And we need to add, he needs to find an address at the jail where he'll be live, not. At the jail where he'll be, he needs support. Let's find an address once he once he get, gets bond or at the jail where he's going to be living, and then you'll follow a change of address with the state. That's yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank right, you. What about Romare Hawthorne? Romare? Nope. All right. What about? Let's see who's next. Demarco Stringer. There we go. We got two two CP two one two. 297, 203 days out of indictment, but armed robbery, possession of firearm during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies and theft by receiving stolen property. The defendant has two cycles. The defendant has no convictions and no FTAs. I think that's your honor. All right. Let's see. I saw, um, I think I saw the lawyer on here earlier. Yes, your honor. Marsha Mignon on behalf oh, no, There you go. I knew I saw you. There you go. All right. Go ahead. Your honor, um, this is a perfect case, and Mr. Stringer would be the poster child for a wrong place at the wrong time. He was a passenger in a vehicle getting a ride back to his home on the evening. He was arrested September 12, 2022. He has been held without bond. Bond was denied September 14, 2022. He is 21 years of age. He lived with his mother and his aunt prior to being arrested. He was employed at Burger King at the time of his arrest. Pursuant to our conversation with mom, he can reside back with her. Bond is granted in this case. Um, she currently resides at 3820 Old Cascade Road. It's an apartment there in Atlanta, Georgia, 30331. He has one count of armed robbery, one count of possession of firearm, one theft by receiving. Uh, we are confident, Judge, based on preliminary evidence we have gotten in this case, and we'll be able to show that our client is not guilty. However, the issues the court has to decide today are the IALA factors. One, does he pose a risk, a significant risk of fleeing? We submit he's a lifelong resident of the state of Georgia. He does not have the financial resources to leave the jurisdiction, and therefore he has not a significant risk of fleeing. He does not uh, pose a threat or danger to any person, to the community, or to any property in the community. He poses no significant risk of committing any felony pending trial, and he poses no significant risk of intimidating witnesses or other otherwise obstructing the administration of justice. Uh, we submit to the court that bond in the armed robbery count should be set at 5,000, possession of firearm 3,000, and theft by receiving at 2000. The reason we're asking for such low amounts, Your Honor, is because his mom has limited resources, and we submit to the court that it would be a grave injustice that poverty is the reason he stays in jail, because the bond would be too high for her and um, the aunt who lives with his mother to be able to make it based on their minimal income. Thank you. All right. What says the state? Thank you, Judge. Very briefly, our recommendation, because he is entitled to bond uh, by statute, uh, count one, we're asking for 100000 count two, 15000 and count three, 1000 for a total of uh, 116,000 good bond, no contact. Ankle. I really need the clip from uh, the old Saturday Night Live where he responds with Jane, you ignorant slut. That would be perfect right there. A monitor, um, <laughs> court, certainly court, 24 hour curfew, no weapons, uh, no contact with co defendants, um, and other, any other terms and conditions the court uh, deems appropriate in this matter. Judge. And I think, and I'm not sure how many times I used to tell this when I was working with the magistrate judges. Theft to have received and stolen property is a gun. Even it is found in the bottom of the lake, and God herself could not pull the trigger. That is a felony. But is, that, is that what we have, RSP, on, the, on, a, on a weapon? I, mean, I apologize, yeah, on a firearm, it's, Your Honor? It's a, yeah, it's a 9 millimeter. <laughs> yeah, that is a, uh, all right. Um, says it drives me crazy. Nobody, nobody ever Yeah, that's a, that is a felony. Um, but I got you. Uh, let's yeah. describe no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 1097 Lena. Uh, it just says Lena in Atlanta. Um, and he's going to live in Fulton County, right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, no further contact with Denard, D-E-N-A-R-D, Hillen, H-I-L-L-A-N. No further contact with your co-defendants, Amadi, A-M-A-D-I, Mason, Jaquavius Britton, J-A-Q-U-A-V-I-O-U-S, Britton, B-R-I-T-T-O-N, and Gerada, J-E-R-A-D-A, Henderson, common spelling of Henderson. I have ankle monitor paid for by the county, 24 hours, court lawyer, medical employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof employer location you're going to be working and a schedule you have to apply that to the ankle monitoring company all right all right uh forty thousand count one fifteen thousand count two and ten thousand count three best of luck to you sir i'll also pass that name on uh ma'am to madam da i'm thank sorry you. thank you judge I certainly will thank you 
All right. Uh, Thank you. Jerry. Excuse. Yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Mark Tavia Smith, wave your hand. All right, Mark Tavia Smith is two two CP two one three three zero four. 167 days without indictment, no bond as of October 20th. On theft, I received a stolen property and possession of marijuana less than an ounce. Break. Defendant has four cycles. Defendant has no convictions and no FTA at this time. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Long. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Uh, Smith is age 22. Uh, he's lived, His address is in Atlanta, Georgia, and 2155 Hollywood Drive, where his mother and aunt live, so he's got family in the area. He also has a, a two-year-old daughter about to be about to turn three shortly, and a uh, another small child about, about to be born. He went through the 11th grade, and he's worked at his, aunt, his aunt's I'm restaurant it's called Sabrina's Kitchen as a cashier be before cool. he was arrested, and his aunt says he can return there to work there again. Uh, so he will have a job once he gets out. He does uh, try and do community service uh, on his spare time when he's um, – and he has a limited history, and he's okay with an ankle monitors. And uh, so we're requesting that there be four thousand five hundred on the theft and five hundred the misdemeanor. This attorney's like so needy. He he has no problem with ankle monitors. He does community service. He's got a two year old. He also commits crime. Okay, demeanor, uh, so that we can get him to the bail project uh, as under five thousand dollars. Right. What says the state? Your Honor, th thank you, Judge. Uh, I see the defendant may not have any convictions, but he looks like he's got two open uh, felony cases, 21 SC 178374 and 22 SC 183050, plus three uh, unindicted, unfortunately, uh, uh, CP cases before us. And so it appears that he's had plenty of contact with uh, law enforcement, unfortunately, and our recommendation on count one is 20,000. Uh, and recommendation on the marijuana is uh, 1,000, 21,000. No, I apologize. Um, yeah, that's right, 21,000. Uh, good bond, Your Honor. Uh, no contact. Uh, stay away, ankle monitor if he gets released. Uh, no further violations of the law. Um, stay away from incident location and uh, any other terms and conditions uh, the court deems appropriate in this matter, Judge. All right. All right. Uh, no drugs unless prescribed. No alcohol. No weapons. Stay away from six one five Oliver Street. Excuse me, Oliver Street Northwest in Atlanta, Georgia. And the stolen property. I was having fun. Who stole? What was the owner of the stolen property? Because I couldn't find that. Let's see if I can. Oh, that matter, Judge. Hold on. Yeah. Ooh, put this in here. So I get hold of I thought it was a gun, but I don't know who the. Yeah. Because he's got so much stuff here. Hold on here. Okay. Oh, 213304. Let's see here. We can help with one. I, I'm a fan of George Jenkins. He is on top of it. You he's are correct. Hold on here. He's like not happy about it. Maybe yeah. it's not trust. based on what I have an Odyssey as well, Judge. I'm not looking With at the initial prosecutor. Either. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, 15,000 count one, 500 count two. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, Judge. All right. Let's see. Victor Garcia Guzman. Position 17. All right. Do we have a. I've got uh, Andrew Hall's lawyer. We're, okay, right there you go. Andrew Hall, right here, Judge. Yeah, All right, okay. got you. Sorry, it's hard to find people sometimes. All right, 23 CP215. All you need to know, they, they, they're like, <laughs> his attorney's like, he's a dreamer. <laughs> All you need to know is he brings he brings in the, the high priced, competent attorney <laughs> that he's paying. Yep, he's in a gang. 077. 90. Two days without indictment, un unlawful for a person employed by associated criminal street gang to conduct or participate in criminal street gang activity, armed robbery, and battery. No bond as of January the 1st. Free. Defendant has 10 cycles. Defendant has a misdemeanor disorderly conduct in 2014. Defendant has two um, FTAs in 2016. And defendant has one FTA in 2017. And nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Hall. Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, Mr. Garcia Guzman is 26 years old. Uh, he's been here in the Atlanta area, uh, first arrived around when he was five. He attended Riverwood, Riverwood High School, did not graduate, dropped out. Uh, he will live, he has been living and will continue to live if released on bond at 2757 Shallowford Road, Shambly, Georgia, 30341. That should be the address that's already on his paperwork with the court. 
uh, and that's still his address. He would live there with his mom, Ms. Lucia Guzman, and his two younger sisters, both of whom are minors. I will not announce their names out loud in court. I did speak to his mom. She originally was going to attend here to confirm all this. I spoke to her specifically because of the 5 p.m. court time. She works on the cleaning crew at Homewood Suites, and so was unable to sign on from her employment. But I said, told Ms. Guzman I'd make a point to confirm as an officer of the court. I had spoken to her and told Your Honor that. Uh, Mr. Garcia Guzman, Ms. Garcia, has, a, has one child, a daughter. Uh, he supports her financially, the mother of his child and his daughter, um, and who, again, is a minor, so I'm not going to call her out by name, uh, live here in the Atlanta area. Uh, and Mr. Garcia provides financial support uh, for his daughter, which he has done. He also works. Uh, he has a job waiting for him at Peach Striping and Services. Peach Striping and Services uh, does the striping in residential and commercial um, lots and places. They also do some work for the um, highway department on the highways, but their primary work would be um, uh, doing um, the painting for both commercial and residential parking lots and other parking spaces. They do do some asphalt repair within the uh, area of their work as well. I've spoken uh, with the owner of the company, Mr. Homer Pineda. Mr. Pineda has confirmed that, yes, indeed, uh, he has a high. Yeah, yeah, he does all that as a front, but mostly he's a drug dealer. My opinion of Mr. Garcia, Mr. Garcia is a good worker. He has actually written a letter um, that I have been filed with a notice of filing to the court. I forwarded that along. I've been previously in contact with Mr. Chris Ferry on this case. My apologies, Mr. Jenkins. I did not know that you had taken up the case today, so my fault. Um, oh, yeah, and, and and Jenkins is having none of it. Not at all, counsel. Um, I passed that along to Mr. Sperry today as part of the notice of filing so that he would have, have it ahead of time. I did email it to Mr. Jenkins once the hearing started. I realized Mr. Sperry would not be here. But in fairness, Mr. Jenkins, I've just dropped it on him in the middle of the hearing. So he probably barely had a chance to look at it. Um, but I have personally confirmed again, officer of the court, Mr. Pineda, as recently as again today, uh, the SE is looking forward and has a job waiting for Mr. Garcia. Uh, and then most of this, you can see it's like a whole different world. This guy, Andrew Hall, is like the attorneys I deal with every day. It's just a whole different level. <laughs> oh, it's it's fun for me to watch. Importantly, I think of greatest significance here is I've actually talked to the victim, Juan Hernandez. He actually came to my office. I didn't have to go track him down or anything like that. Uh, he knows um, Victor, uh, Mr. Garcia. Uh, they've known, known each other for some time. Uh, I won't get into it. Well, and he has signed an affidavit. Uh, and I made sure the affidavit was signed only in the presence of me and my paralegal. So there's no other outside influence or anything there. Uh, Mr. Hernandez does speak English, and so we went over everything. I've gone ahead and provided that to Mr. Sperry, um, and then I also filed a redacted copy removing the personal information for Mr. Hernandez with the court. And then once I realized Mr. Jenkins was here, I then emailed a copy over to Mr. Jenkins as well, so he would have it. Uh, and what I did was, and, and so it should be available to the court. I can email it separately to the court. Uh, but Mr. Hernandez quite clearly uh, goes through and says that uh, Mr. Garcia did not rob him, attack him, commit any crimes, didn't help anyone do that. Um, and I, in fact, got a copy of Mr. Hernandez's passport to attach to the affidavit so there's no confusion about the person I'm talking to is, in fact, uh, the correct Mr. Juan Hernandez. He did, he's misidentified in the warrant as Faro. His actual spelling is Fierro, F-I-E-R-R-O, uh, and that's attached to the affidavit as well. He has actually reached out to me on multiple occasions, but the first time he and I met, he did not have his passport. So we set the second meeting where he came with his passport so I could get a copy of it, uh, and I attached that. And I think that is of great significance. Uh, I have previously talked to Mr. Sperry. Again, I understand this is not Mr. Jenkins just covering today. I talked to Mr. Sperry back in February. Um, I did not have the affidavit at that time, um, but I did understand that Mr. Hernandez did not believe Mr. Garcia was part of the case, had not done what the other alleged co-defendant had done and had not participated. Mr. Sperry said that he would look at it uh, and, you know, let me know. I understand the DA's office is super busy, um, but then once I got the affidavit, I sent it over. Again, I've just sent it over, and so Mr. Jenkins had probably barely had a chance to even look at it. Um, we, have, I, we have actually someone from the gang unit here. Okay. All right. See you right there, Ms. Larissa Olivier for the state judge. Oh, okay. I thought it was Mr. Jenkins' case. My apologies. Well, she's a newer okay. member of our office, but we're glad to have her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ms. Olivier. I've sent it to everybody but you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to look at it either, though. I'm on. Uh-oh, the gang unit's on the case. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's super significant, Judge, um, because of the Ayala, fi Ayala factors. Um, I respect Mr. Mr. Garcia poses no significant risk of flight. In fact, he's um, innocent. The victim agrees he's innocent. And so his um, biggest and highest desire once he gets out of jail, it's, of course, to clear his name. I'm hopeful that with this additional information, uh, that Mr. Sperry and the DA's office will dismiss the charges against Mr. Garcia. I made a point of including Mr. Garcia's contact know, information, including his cell phone number, so that the DA's office could reach out to him on their own Very and speak cool. to him, no problem whatsoever. Uh, I submit that Mr. Garcia is not a significant risk of um, committing any further felonies of police. He's not a significant risk to the community. Uh, his point is, I thought I was going to shim-sham everybody about the gang stuff, but then the gang unit showed up. <laughs> Now he's dancing. He's he's a good attorney. He's doing a good job.
community, his person's or property. In fact, he works. He has a good job waiting for him. Uh, he has a good place to live with his mother and um, sisters. He has a child here who he financially supports. Uh, and he's no significant risk of intimidating witness or obstructing justice. In fact, just the opposite. The victim in this case is in support of Mr. Garcia, does not want him prosecuted, does want the charges dismissed, does want him out of jail, and says he was not involved in any of this. So, uh, um, as I say, I understand you can't decide all the underlying facts, Judge, but I, but Mr. Garcia is uh, entitled to a bond because it's been more than 90 days. And I think some of these factors weigh with the court in determining under Ayala um, how to consider things with respect to what kind of bond to give him. Accordingly, I'm going to ask for a lower bond than I normally would ask for, given this, the kind of charges they are, but given where the case has progressed over the last 90 days. That's $5,000 for the gang uh, charge. Mr. Garcia is not in any gang, no tattoos, no prior convictions or cases involving gangs. Don't really know where that came from whatsoever, but it's a charge that we have to deal with right now. Uh, armed robbery, same thing, I believe, with affidavit. Once the DA's office talks to Mr. Hernandez, I'm hopeful that that will resolve that. And battery, uh, 1,000. So it's 5,000 on the gang activity, 5,000 on armed robbery, and 1,000 uh, for a total of 11,000 good bond. Uh, the reason for that is that he'll be reliant on his mom, Ms. Guzman, who, as I say, works for Oh, oh, he started with mom can't be here because she's she's got a shift at the at the, you know, at the bad, ho the bad hotel to to, you know, clean rooms. And she's the one who's going to pay this. Uh huh. And she's also the one that paid you. I doubt that. I doubt that. Clean crew at Homewood Suites. Uh, she doesn't have some. She has no money, but she has very limited means uh, in posting bond on a case. I hope um, she got to go to a bonding company. And so posting a bond on a case I'm hopeful is going to get dismissed soon. Um, will be money that they'll never see back, obviously, and they don't otherwise wouldn't be able to make the bond. Uh, ankle monitor's fine. Ability to um, he needs to be able to work. Um, medical lawyer, other normal conditions that the court wants to impose, all that's fine. Uh, but our biggest goal is to get him out so he can get back to working. And I'm going to follow up with Mr. Sperry or maybe Ms. Olivier now, I guess apparently, to see if we can't get the case resolved. That's it for me, Judge. Unless you have any questions for me. All right, go ahead, Ms. Olivier. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, in reference to the gang allegations that defense counsel just mentioned, the co-defendant in this case is actually a known member of the Copeland 25 gang. Um, this defendant, at minimum, is an associate. Uh, during the armed robbery, he was actually wearing a necklace that says Copeland 25 on it. So that that kind of identifies you as a member of the, that gang. <laughs> um, in makeshift diamonds. And during the armed robbery, when the victim refused to give up his money, while the co-defendant wielded a firearm inscribed with Copeland 25, um, this defendant punched the victim after the victim refused to give up his money. After that point, the victim did, in fact, give up his money to both defendants, and they fled to a nearby club where they were later apprehended. In terms of the um, significant risk of flight, Judge, we do believe that this defendant's a significant risk of flight. Uh, he is from Mexico. His NCIC shows that he was deported in 2017 to Mexico by the federal government. He is obviously now back. Uh, he has numerous failures to appear on his record. Uh, and all for less severe uh, charges than he's facing here, armed robbery and gang activity. And of course, um, he's facing life on that armed robbery count. It shows that he might be pending a burglary first offender. Uh, I checked onto the cabs, uh, the the superior court in the cab, and it looks I'm sorry, like I'm pending. Saying, whoever this is, you're driving gorgeous or EDM gorgeous. Bye. You made the mistake. Turn your camera on. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. So back like he, he what was that? Gorgeous or medium gorgeous? What is she talking about there? Might still be pending that first offender um, per the Superior Court website in DeKalb. And uh, we believe he's also a risk to the community, given the fact that he's at minimum an associate of this Copeland 25 gang. Uh, they're known for crimes of violence as well exactly. as uh, drug distribution. And also we believe that given the fact that he has known the victim since childhood, which the victim told the police, we believe that he is a risk to intimidate um, witnesses in this case, namely the victim. And there's a possibility, I, and the state will I follow up on everything that. defense counsel mentioned, but there's a possibility that might already be going on. Uh, given that, Judge, we are asking for a $500,000 bond at minimum with the following conditions. Uh, the gang condition have no contact of any kind with any other member or associate. How's the half mil sound to you? Because that, that's what we're recommending. Of a criminal street gang. Also stay away from the named victim and the uh, victim's family. No firearms. Uh, GPS with 24-hour home confinement. No contact with the co-defendant Danielle Hernandez Neva, N-A-V-A. And of course, any other conditions that the court deems proper. We are asking for two hundred fifty thousand on the gang charge, two hundred forty-nine thousand on the armed robbery, and one thousand on the battery. And I believe that is yeah. uh, all I have, Judge. Is there? Judge, a nice, heard briefly? Sure. Is there a nice hold on him? I don't know that I. No. I no. don't see one for this charge. There was one for a separate arrest, but not this one. Okay. I was going to say, go ahead. 
Uh, yes, Judge. There's no ice hold. I checked on that specifically. I mean, under different administrations, um, you know, Mr. Garcia is, you know, he's basically a dreamer who came over here at age five, as I mentioned. He is. Um, oh, I want to puke right now. He's a dreamer. Yeah, he dreamed of being a, a drug dealer and enforcer for a, a, a vicious gang in Atlanta. And his dreams all came true. <laughs> you know, working towards his legal status, but doesn't have current legal status. You know, under a previous administration, there'd be no hope for that. Under the current, you know, uh, administration, there is, we hope, some hope for that. Um, but more importantly is he's here with significant ties from having gone to high school here, to living with his mom, to working here with having a child here. The state's bond recommendation of $500,000 is basically saying, don't give him a bond, Judge. And of course, there's their way of working around the problem, which is Your Honor has to give him a bond. But it's not just any old bond, it has to be a reasonable bond. And I know Your Honor knows all this. Um, but I think the problem with asking when the state comes in here like this is I've been asking for them to, uh, frankly, dismiss the case since February when I talked to Ms. Mr. Per Sperry. Um, we're now 90 days, over 90 days in. He's not been either dismissed or indicted. He's being held. I mean, Judge, he's asked, he's asked the prosecutor to dismiss the case. <laughs> I don't. I don't think you should have any bond. Oh, uh, or I think you just be released. Yeah, you know, UJR on this. And I, I respect we submit. He's entitled to a reasonable bond that he can make and he can get out. We have all these other conditions to assure all the other concerns that the court has. That's what the point behind the ankle monitor is. The 24-hour curfew subject to work. That's why I took the extra steps of going out and getting the uh, letter from the employer, making sure I personally called the employer and so I spoke to the employer and understood exactly what the employer was going to say. And also in this situation. I believe what the state's reading from is whatever they say the police report or yep. warrants say or something like that. Um, but I've actually talked to Mr. Hernandez by myself, not in a situation where I would see that he was intimidating. I went great lengths to avoid exactly the argument the state's making out to somehow the victim's flipping the script because he's under some kind of pressure or something like that. I laid it all out in the affidavit. And the only thing I didn't know was that Mr. Jenkins or Ms. Olivier were going to be on the case because I talked to Mr. Sperry previously and would have gotten them the affidavit otherwise directly. Um, but I made sure that the contact information was, him, was for him in there. And he seemed, when I spoke to him, to be very sincere and very clear under no duress and quite clear that whatever Mr. Danielle Hernandez Nava did or didn't do, that Mr. Garcia was not part of that. And that's all spelled out for us. And so I would respectfully ask that you grant a reasonable bond. Judge, my client seemed sincere to me, especially when he paid me. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by you. The ankle monitor is on you, not on the county. you got a private lawyer. You'll pay for that ankle monitor with a 24-hour right curfew. Court, lawyer, medical. Uh, Ms. Olivier, what do you think about him actually working? Um, Your Honor, if he can provide proof of that, then then the state wouldn't be opposed. Okay. So you got to pay for the ankle monitor, sir, and court, lawyer, medical, and employment. You have to provide proof of employment, name of your employer, and schedule an exact location you're going to be working. You have to supply that. If you get your schedule on a weekly basis, you got to turn that in on a weekly basis. If it's a daily basis, that you got to keep up with them because they get reports. No, no. Oh, also no replicas of weapons. No social media. No further contact with gang members or in affiliates of gangs for Copeland Twenty Five or any other gang. So that necklace you got, can't even wear that necklace. All right. No further contact with Juan Hernandez Fierro. F I E R R O. Uh, stay away from Fifty Five Northwood Drive. I'm sorry, Northwood Road. No yes. further contact with Danielle Hernandez Four Nava, N A V A. Also, stay out of Fulton County, sir. The only reason you come into Fulton County is court or to see your lawyer. Don't get gas, don't get a flat tire, don't get a snack. Put snacks in your car so that you don't even have to stop in Fulton County and get any kind of snacks. And don't get a flat tire. I say, uh, I said, no social media. And also, when I say just no further contact with anybody of Copeland 25 or any other gangs or gang affiliates here or abroad in the U.S., Hundred fifty thousand on unlawful gang, fifty thousand on armed robbery, fifty thousand on battery. Best of luck to you, sir. He has extremely lucrative work for the gang. Get you, get you, a, a prelim. Yes, sir. Thank you. Judge, that completes my business. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mine no. as well, Judge. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got uh, position thirteen. Quintavia Stevens, you here? Perfect. Hope he has another case. Oh, I guess he does. All right, two two CP. Not a hope that you do, but I'm looking at these numbers. Not a hope you have another case. But I'm looking at five hundred sixty eight days in, in jail without indictment. Looks like that's probably on another case, unless it's been indicted. Uh, 22CP21380, Quintavia Stevens, unlawful for an inmate to possess any controlled substance, drug, or gun, or dangerous weapon. No bond as of October the 31st. Print! Rawr! The defendant has eight cycles. The defendant has no conviction and no FTA at this time. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, go ahead, Mr. Long. Yes, Mr. Stevens is age 19. He was born here in Georgia and lived here the entire life with extended family. He has a, a one-year-old child, a girl, who lives with uh, her mother, who he visits a lot. Uh, he has a 10th grade education for Panicker High. Um, he would like to pursue a GED. Uh, the address on file is correct, though he could also, let's see here. Yes, at Cox uh, Court here in Atlanta, Georgia. That's his mother's address. Uh, 
Uh, he has a limited uh, history, as you, as you just heard. Uh, he's been for not more than 90 days. Uh, and he wants to visit his uh, child who has been, uh, but he's been in jail for pretty much the entire time. Uh, so we are asking for a reasonable bond in this case, uh, as it's only a possession charge in the jail. So no more than 10,000. All right, what says the state? Do you know the status on his other cases? Well, it looks like he's been indicted uh, okay. fairly recently, Your Honor, in 23 SC 186. Uh, let me make sure I have that right. 796 also has a, a 22 indictment, uh, 22 SC 185548. Um, and so I think he may have some, in his other cases, some gang affiliation. Uh, he, I think the allegation in this matter is that he had or possessed F. Shank of some form of offensive weapon in, while in the jail. So state's recommendation is $25,000 cash on this uh, offense. Obviously, no contact, no uh, gang uh, affiliation. Um, no social media, even though he's in custody. Um, and once he's released, 24-hour curfew, ankle monitor, no further violation of the law, any other terms and conditions, no weapons, no, I guess, replicas of weapons, uh, and uh, anything the court deems appropriate in this matter, Judge. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the, because you work with the conflict, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and exact location you're going to be working, sir. No contact with any gangs, gang affiliates, uh, no replicas of weapons, no social media. No further contact with your co-defendant, Kenton, K-E-N-T-O-N, Robertson. $20,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. I'll put that over there to make sure we get it so you can handle all your cases uh, globally. What about Keenan Hudson? Best of luck to you, sir. You can play the booth. Keenan Hudson, got gotcha. you. David Jones for Mr. Hudson. All right, this is 22CP214310. Keenan Hudson, 279 days without indictment. No bond as of November 30th of aggravated assault. Wow. <laughs> Michael, the defendant has no conviction in a PA at this time. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Judge, he is a lifelong resident of the Atlanta area. Most of, matter of fact, all of his family reside in North Georgia. Um, he's a high school graduate. At the time of his arrest, he had been employed by Amazon for three years. Um, the um, incident happened at the jail. Um, he has two children, twins. If granted a bond, he would reside with the, the mother of his children and um, her mother. They live out in Covington, Your Honor. Um, I can tell you the street number, 4165, but I can't read my own handwriting, so I don't know the street name. I'm with you. You just file an address when you get it. <laughs> okay. And, Judge, we would have no objection to a condition that he stay away from the incident location. <laughs> <laughs> Starting right now, correct? Correct. Okay. What says the state? Thank you, Judge. Uh... Oh boy. Uh, let's see. Mr. Hudson's been busy. You know, it looks like he is uh, has a uh, current case, 22 SC, 184, uh, 335, uh, armed robbery, felony murder. murder. Um, let's see here. He also has a 23 SC, 186, 484, uh, violation of Street Gang Act and another murder. Uh, so this defendant is accused of uh, having this incident at the jail with a shank. Uh, and so... Um, <clears throat> Consistent with uh, his current charges and the allegations in this case, the state's going to request uh, 100000 cash on the aggravated assault. No mm -hmm. violations, no further contact with uh, the victim in this case. No further uh, gang affiliation, no social media, 24-hour uh, curfew, uh, ankle monitor, um, no weapons, no replicas of weapons, uh, no violations of the law whatsoever, any other terms, conditions to the court deemed appropriate in this matter, Judge. Thank you. Yeah, I don't no. Oh, yeah, you, you can't because I don't think he had bond on those murder cases, did he? That's correct. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. The judge is not two separate cases. It's all only one, one case. It was reindicted earlier in March. There's not two separate murders okay. or allegations. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that, counsel. And uh, Judge, I would ask, given the fact that we believe he ultimately be found to acting in self-defense, that you set a bond in the amount of twenty five thousand, bearing in mind that he does not have a bond currently on the homicide charge. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, Mr. Hudson, what it means is, I mean, you're not getting out. This is, um, but no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, no further contact with Trontavious, T-R-O-N-T-A-V-I-O-U-S, last name Tate, T-A-T-E. If and when you get a bond, you have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, and medical. 
You live in Covington, so you can stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. Don't get gas. Don't get a snack. Don't put snacks in your car. Drive. Don't get a flat tire. No social media. No gang affiliation and no replicas of weapons. <laughs> oh, I'm aware, Tia. You're, you're a retained lawyer, though, aren't you, Mr. Jones? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> All right. That ankle monitor will be paid by you, not the county. I have so much. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw this uh, uh, in my email, though, Mr. Jones, to uh, Madam DA. Mr. Jenkins knows I do. I threw it to send them Ms. Lewis. Uh, after they've been in so long, so they can check out, catch it up on indictment. But I'm going to go ahead and do a $75,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. And, Judge, that's all I have. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Good evening to you all. You too. Uh, Dewan Washington. All right. We got 22CP210153. Uh, 2, 2, 284 days without indictment. $38,000 good bond. September the 27th. Ag armed robbery, ag assault, possession of farm during the commission of a felony, and possession of firearm by a convicted felon. <laughs> then we go to 22CP213664. Same thing, 284 days without indictment, uh, $5,000 good bond as of November the 3rd for possession of marijuana, less than ounce, unauthorized possession of inmate, item by an inmate. Free trial. Defendant has nine cycles. Defendant has a armed robbery in 2016. Defendant has a simple battery from violence misdemeanor in 2018. Defendant has a probation violation in 2019. Defendant has a false imprisonment in 2022. And defendant has a criminal attempt to commit a felony in 2022. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Rose. All right, thank you, Judge. Um, yeah, Mr. Washington is 28 years old. The address on file is a good address. That is Fulton County. Uh, he's lived in Georgia his entire life. Uh, he would be staying with his mother there. Uh, should he be re receive a bond? Um, he's a high school graduate. Um, and uh, yeah, he. Um, sorry. That's a great uh, I just intends to go to work and, you know, just be a good law abiding citizen should be a received bond. We would just ask for the <laughs> wants uh, to be on, uh, <laughs> position 25, not to exceed 25,000. And then we would ask for 500 on the marijuana and 1000 on the uh, unauthorized possession on the other counts. Thank you, Judge. All right. What says the state? Thank you, Judge. Um, at this time, the state would request that you deny defense counsel's motion for bond reduction position uh, 25 and 26. We believe uh, the no, no significant change in circumstance that would warrant a reduction at this time, Judge. Uh, we certainly would ask you to, if you uh, would so kind, put this on the list as well to Madam DA so we can get it charged up uh, together. Um, uh, he's already got a bond. I think it's appropriate 25 and 26, Judge. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and also, uh, Mr. Owens, for folks in your office, anybody else out here is a private lawyer, please tell all your friends if, if they've got cases. If you have someone that's been on an ankle monitor for over a year, there's been no yeah. violations, file a motion, get back so we can, you know, you know, talk about that ankle monitor coming off. And number two, what else? If you need a prelim and you haven't had a prelim, I mean, you know, we're depending on, you know, technology to spit it out. But if there's been someone here that doesn't have a bond hearing or something like that, please. I mean, we're not offended. Let us know. You can email uh, orca at FultonCountyGA.gov to okay. let us know because we just got lists. You know, we're, we're depending on running a report from Odyssey. And, of course, that's a man-made computer program, but we have absolutely no problem. And we're hoping that if somebody says, hey, look, Judge, this has been out there this many days. I mean, we appreciate especially if you're waiting on a prelim, because when you file them together or when you file, when you go to first appearance, you file a bond hearing, Odyssey looks at it like you just had a bond hearing. So it won't trigger it to notify us that you filed a new one. So if you right. get first appearance, wait, I mean, like, a few days, even a week, it's it's not going to matter as far as getting any faster, getting a hearing, and then file that. So just let all your friends know. Sounds good. All right. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, anything else? Uh, I, yeah, nothing else, Judge. I, I do believe uh, I uh, yeah, you say I gave it. my position. 
All right. Yeah, I didn't know if you had anything else. Okay. So on position 25, ending in 0153. No further contact with Taylor Smith, Zion Millen, M-I-L-O-N. Stay away from 1808 Lanier Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. No drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. Ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Like I said, don't mean you can go hang out for, you know, a Chick-fil-A or something for three or four hours. you got to be actually working. So, let's see. And he's still living in Atlanta, right? Yes, Judge. All right. Uh, 24 days. So 14,000, 14,000, 4,000, 14, 14, and 4. I don't think he's had a prelim yet, has he, Mr. No, no, Judge. All right. So see, that's one. Like, if you got Judge, I'll make them aware, and that's on Mr. Washington. I'll make them aware about the prelim. Okay. Yeah. So make sure yeah. if you have anyone that don't have prelims because we want to try to get them out there. All right, I just uh, look look for a slew of them coming. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. We're, we're fine. Yeah. We, you know, we run a report and five show up. We're like, no, there's got to be more than these. Right, All right. right. And ending in three, six, six, four, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. No for the contact with co-defendant Ronald Dorsey. So, uh, okay, no contraband in the jail. 2000 and 2000 for a total of $4,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. All right, thank you, Judge. That's my last case for the evening. Yes, sir. Thanks. Nice. Are you, thank you. Are you Romare Hawthorne? All right. Oh, Miss Wolf. I saw you. Sir. Okay. All right. This is, and I'll put this one on my list too. 304 days without indictment. We've got 22CP 209620. Aggravated assault, battery, possession of marijuana, less announced $45,100 good bond as of September the 12th. Free trial. I apologize, Your Honor. What position is this one? Uh, number three. Number three. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Defendant has 13 cycles. Um, defendant has a possession of tools for commission of a crime. First Offenders Act that was revoked in 2011. Defendant has a burglary. First Offenders Act that was revoked in 2011. Defendant has a criminal damage property. First Offenders Act that was revoked in 2011. Then it has a criminal use of article with offered ID at mark in 2009. Defendant has a receipt, possession, or transport of firearm by a convicted felon in 2009. Defendant has a probation violation in 2011. Defendant has a probation violation in 2013. Defendant has a FTA in 2013. Defendant has a receipt, possession, or transport of firearm by a convicted felon in 2014. Defendant has a probation violation in 2015, and defendant has a probation violation in 2017. And nothing right. further, Your Honor. What says the state? Uh, Your Honor, uh, I believe this defendant does have bond, and so we request you to deny defense counsel's motion for bond reduction in this matter. Any other terms and conditions the court deems appropriate, uh, <clears throat> as stated, Judge. Right, Ms. Wolf. Sorry. Thank right you, right. Judge. Um, Mr. Hawthorne, as the court is aware, has been in custody for quite a while. Um, Georgia yeah, Justice, four days. Yes, Georgia Justice Project began working with him a little over a month ago. Um, and I guess the pertinent facts, I'll tr do my best to keep it short, but I know the court knows I'm not so great at brevity. Um, Mr. Hawthorne is in custody on three charges, aggravated assault, misdemeanor battery, and a misdemeanor possession of marijuana. His bond on the aggravated assault is $25,000, battery is $20,000, misdemeanor marijuana is $100. I wanted to emphasize this for a couple of reasons. Primarily, his co-defendant has been released on bond, and his co-defendant's bond was substantially lower than his. Um, and that is significant because, and I would be happy to read directly from the police report, the victim indicated that the co-defendant is the person who committed the aggravated assault in this case. Um, not only did, is that noted in the state incident report, it's also... No, ma'am, Miss Weller. Miss Weller, what, what are you doing? You're not on television. Go ahead. Sorry. that People like they think it's great that they're appearing on here. Go ahead. Um, the fact that the, vic the victim also indicated that the person who committed an aggravated assault on him is the co-defendant who is out on bond. And that is reflected in body camera footage of a statement 
by the victim to law enforcement saying he is 100% certain that the co-defendant committed this aggravated assault. We saw, I actually showed that video to the state. I provided a copy to the state last um, Monday at our first scheduled preliminary hearing at which the law enforcement officer failed to appear. Um, that prelim has been rescheduled, uh, but I do expect that on the merits, this aggravated assault will be dismissed and Mr. Hathorne would be charged with only a misdemeanor battery for participating in a fight. The other thing- Okay, my client is Toast McGoad's innocent. I mean, perhaps, but like he- <laughs> I don't know. Significant aspect about the facts of this case that are reflected in the incident report itself is that um, Mr. Hathorne has a partner and they share a two-year-old daughter. And the partner, Ms. Brundage, indicated to law enforcement that earlier in uh, about a day before, the victim attempted to rape her in front of their daughter. And so I'm not suggesting that starting a fight in response to that is appropriate. In fact, Mr. Hathorne's social worker has been working with him in decision-making skills as well as healthy relationship building skills as part of his GJP programming. But it certainly sheds light on what the facts and the allegations in this case are. All that said, the victim has been clear and consistent that Mr. Hathorne is not the person who used a knife on him. It was the co-defendant who was out on bond. Um, Mr. Hathorne, I have been able to confirm, does have a job. If he is able to make bond, he'd be returning to his job at Waffle House. He would not be returning to the same address where this incident um, or the approximate incident where this occurred. Um, he would be living at 4300 Snap Finger Woods Drive which is indicator, however, his employment is in Fulton County. So I would request that he not be banned from Fulton County for purposes of work, medical and legal. Um, I would also just let the court know if we were in an in-person setting, he would have several family members present. Uh, he has strong ties to the community. There were about five people who showed up for the prelim that was unable to move forward last week. Uh, and I'm asking the court to reduce the aggravated assault bond to $2,000, the battery to $1,000, and the misdemeanor marijuana bond to a um, unsecured judicial release for a total of a $3,000 bond. All right. What says the state? Your Honor, uh, let's see. I think I, I, I spoke earlier in connection with uh, Mr. Hawthorne that uh, we request you did not submit counsel's motion in this case and that uh his bond is appropriate as it is uh currently and um that's our position in you know, other terms and conditions you uh, believe appropriate in this matter obviously uh we'll certainly talk about the facts of this case and whether he's a party of, of a crime and to what charge but at this point we don't believe it's uh appropriate to uh give a bond rejection at this time your honor thank you all right so we got a. Uh... No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Bobby Rembert, R-E-M-B-E-R-T. No further contact with your co-defendant, Bryant Dukes. Stay away from Cleveland Avenue. Uh, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, or employment, as long as you supply the name of your proof of employment, is scheduled in the exact location you're going to be working. Uh, David Accolade, if I see you driving one more time, no, 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 don't even say a word, just listen. If I see you drive, are you going to listen? If I see you drive, get your, you're not even listening. He's, he's not listening. You just want to get out, run around. You've been moving in that car. And if I see it one more time, you will be kicked out of here and will not be let back in. Got me? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, and uh, stay out of Fulton County unless you're for court. Lawyer, does he, go to, he, had, he has medical appointments here in Georgia, in Atlanta, Fulton County? Essentially, yes. Fred. Okay, medical and employment, but you have to put the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working, sir. I placed your name on the list to be sent over to uh, the DA so that they can see. And, of course, uh, Mr. Jenkins keeps up with this, too. So I'll do uh, 20000 10,000 and uh, the misdemeanor marijuana UJR jail. 
Were you in front of me when they, the cop didn't show up? No, Judge, it was Judge Dallas. No, I was going to say, was it back on my calendar? Because one bite at the apple, that's it. Uh, it's, it's scheduled for Friday. I mean, she knows that, too. There's one bite at the apple. You'll get a second bite. They don't show up. They're getting dismissed. So hopefully they'll show up. And I just put this in my list, my ongoing list right there to uh, Miss Willis. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. Let's see. Now we got some, mo right? That's everything as far as that. We just got motions. All right. So we got Guandra Mobley. Uh, this is uh, position one on that motions counter. Uh, Free trial, two three two CP two one six three seven one Quandra Mobley. She's out on the bond with aggravated assault. Pre trial, is there anything I need to know? And let me tell you what, Christine Clark, if you are going to talk, you're going to have to remove that background because I'm going to have to see your face and not like in and out, in and out. Anything I need to know, Bostic? I mean, Bostic two point uh, One moment, Your Honor. And let me pull this up while I got it. <laughs> and Judge, while she's uh, doing that, I just wanted to remind you on position number two on the add-on, right. Mr. Clemens, that was resolved uh, by Judge Dempsey with an order. Okay. Thank you. While she's looking it up, Mr. Law, tell me what it is you're asking for. Uh, we're uh, asking for the ink bonnet to be to be removed, as she's right. unable to work with that. Well, uh, shot Richard in place Clevenger shirt. Employer. I mean, how long she had it on? Uh, this was February twentieth. So she just so, so she bought it out shortly after then. Okay, so tell me about what do you mean by can't work with it on? Uh, so she was a uh, place, uh, she works for Acumen Fiscal Agents, which is an elderly care, elderly, elderly care uh, agency, and they require their uh, agents to go into other people's homes, including elderly care, and a lot of those uh, homes are the well-off, and they have placed her on leave from her position. Uh, oh, man, I got to get together. It can't be hidden under clothing and uh, very easily, and it looks bad for the uh, company to have that. And so if she is unable to get the ankle monitor removed, she will lose her position and not just be placed on leave. Right. Ms. Robinson, do you know, did you ever figure out, did we figure out what the status was on the little watch thing? On the teletracks? Right. I think that they were still uh, working out those issues according to Phoenix. They hadn't yet rolled them out. That was according to Ms. Gaston. Yeah, last time you talked about it, let's see. Uh, Your Honor, I'm ready. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, defendant has two cycles. Uh, defendant doesn't have any convictions, and defendant has no FTEs. All right, what says the state? Your Honor, I'll leave it in your discretion. I I, I was wondering what was going on with the uh, the watch band from Teletrex. I know that they've been trying to use them, but uh, there's still a hold up on them. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to see. What the, I was looking back through my text message to see what the hold up is. I mean, because those are actually kind of a thing. That's it. Quantra Mobley looks and, like she's uh, for what it's worth, Your Honor, she does have a, a one-year-old child who has special needs image issues, oh, good um, Lord. which includes having to go out to doctor's appointments and things like that, and uh, safety courses such as for swimming, and that she can't go to those uh, some of those places, uh, do the ankle monitor on there for safety reasons, according to the agencies, and like can't get in the pool for the swimming lessons as well. Uh, I might have gotten into this. So it is a safety issue for a child. Just saying. It's possible. Uh, let's see, March 27th, uh, it says, um,
He wanted to check the terms of their A and uh, Ryan Bias had to check the terms of their A and A agreement and reach out as well. Yes, it's a contract issue, huh? Okay. Yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, here's the thing. One, I get it, and I don't want her to be in a, you know unemployed or lose her job. Then I got to balance the. Uh, This doesn't look, is this a bond that I gave? Because it seemed kind of. It was a Judge Ryan Locke. It seems a little bit uh, low. I mean, she's not wearing it like, I mean, her pants aren't covering it. I don't. Well. I haven't seen her in person myself. Oh, no. but are, your, are your pants not covering it, ma'am? You can speak. You just, not hey, um, yeah, my pants do not cover it because I'm wearing like scrubs and they kind of like tight fitted at the bottom. So I don't it want do no not scrubs. cover the monitor. And also they can see it through even when I try to wear bigger pants and I sit down and stuff. You can see the monitor through my pants. I don't know. I just this is I, I work in a professional setting. It's just not a uh, like the houses that I go to and the people that I work for and the families that I work. Oh, she's too professional to uh, deal with the monitor. Um, think of that before you commit crime. How's that? Before, it's just not a good look. I mean, it's my first it's time ever being look. in jail. And <laughs> I don't know. I just. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not that type of person. I'm not even a criminal. I'm not even a person. You said you might be having a cocktail. That will be I, walking I around know. with this. My it's first time in jail for an alleged case. That is. <laughs> well, everybody in here is alleged, ma'am. No, but nobody else is. Anything I else? understand that, but it's alleged just monitor, monitor is a bit much. I'm sorry. Yeah, the leg well, monitor is not a know, good look. Maybe. I say. I say. <laughs> They, they, those monitors, yeah, seriously. The color palette's all wrong. <laughs> Aww. It's sweet that well, you guys are I sweet mean, to Euthenia. Have you been staying away from... Yes, we. I'm staying away from him. He don't even get his kid. I mean, we have a mediator. I try to get him to get his kid, but that that's not working. Um, we're currently working through a mediator, and I'm not having no contact at all with McQuavie Scott. So it's a lot of me trying to find a babysitter. Then I, my job. If I lose my job because of this, it, it will definitely be a lot. I mean, it concerns me They're saying that allegedly there's video of you pointing a gun at him and there was a one year old there. So there's that. That That's that's, you know, causing me issues. The judge hates that the, the, the judge hates that she's pinned in by the low bond of the prior judge. She I was not it. present at the time. And okay, the, well, the police lied, but I guess. The, the video. Mom <laughs> but don't don't argue with me about the facts, okay? Because your lawyer don't want you to say anything. I'm just reading from the warrant. That's correct. She ha she has to go by what's in the warrant at this point. No, that's true. And this is a cross defendant situation uh, with the alleged victim. Yeah, I see he was charged too. Yeah, and he already, he has a stay away from the uh, home where she's living at right now. On his bond as well. Yeah, I was just, just no contact. Just... All right. Well, I mean, we can remove it, but I don't know how much to. All right, ma'am. I won't trust you. The only thing you better think about is your child, because 
You know how you like hugging and squeezing and loving on your kid? Violate one of these bond conditions. There ain't no hugging and squeezing and, don't, and loving on her anymore. All right? All right, just send me the modified order. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you. Thank you. And Judge, Mr. Lyles is going to prepare the order and send it to the court. Yeah, you're going to prepare it, right, Mr. Lyles? I can do so, yes. Okay, yeah, the, the, the clerks don't prepare the modifications. I got them working too hard on the other. I, I ordered a new sweatshirt for Yesenia and for myself. The, the, they're really cool from uh, Covert Design, but whatever. We've had problems getting them. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Maybe, maybe we'll uh, do a stream together. Other end. All right, let's see. Chad Smith. Thank you, so All right, this is position three, 22CP two, two, 210557. Aggravated stalking, aggravated stalking. Anything I need to know, Bostic 2.0? <laughs> Um, defendant has two cycles. Um, defendant has a misdemeanor DUI conviction in 2018 and nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Shelley. Good evening, Your Honor. Thank you for having us. Um, Mr. Smith is present on Zoom. We filed a motion for modification of his bond conditions, which is very similar to the case we just heard or the, the, the court just heard. Um, Mr. Smith is requesting his ankle monitor be removed. <clears throat> he has gained in before this happened, before he was arrested, and he did spend over 90 days in custody, we got him a bond back in October. He's had his ankle monitor on since October 12th. He was previously in uh, the Marine Corps in the reserves, um, but now he has become a leasing consultant for a very professional company and has to have that professional appearance. Um, so I did file the motion for bond modification, um, not because he's seeking unfettered freedom or contact with the victims, anything along the, that, that, those lines. Um, when he's not working, he's at home with his partner, Mr. Raven. Um, so since his arrest, which was back in July, he served 90 days. We got him a bond in October, which required the court's ankle monitor. He's had no contact with the victims. He's 25 years old, um, no criminal history or felony criminal history, as you've heard. Um, he resides, like I said, with his partner, Mr. Raven, at 4469 Northside Parkway. Mm. Contact with the victims. Um, some of the alleged... There's some low-key pandering going on here, but okay. ...facts in this case are a dispute between um, Mr. Raven and Mr. Smith lived together with two females. Um, there was a fight. There was a protective order in place. And then he, they went back to get a drone or some sort of Amazon package. And that's when he violated the temporary protective order, which resulted in this arrest for aggravated stalking. Um, since then, he's had absolutely no contact. I do believe that they're both on this Zoom. Um, I think I saw them both, and I don't know if they have anything to say. It's my understanding that um, when we had our initial bond hearing, I did receive some messages How did that you they know? did not want him in Seriously. custody or any of that thing, but that, that's not my place. That's for the state <laughs> to discuss. However, we're asking that the bond, um, the bond be modified to remove his ankle monitor so he can wear his, he has to wear suits and he, he's the first point of contact for people seeking a, a new lease, um, not lease on life, but <laughs> a new lease for an apartment. <laughs> uh, so it's got that professional environment. He has to wear suits. And also, he's yeah. That, that ankle monitor is a drag for that. I I, I don't I, I don't dispute that argument. But does he deserve it? And do we trust him? Is the question. Considering supplementing his income by doing Instacart or DoorDash or some sort of um, some sort of employment. That we, he, let me put it this way: He's very concerned that if he does take additional employment, such as Instacart or Ubering or anything like that, that he won't be able to be in compliance with this court order with the ankle monitor on. And like I said, you know, he has to wear a suit. He is the first point of contact in a professional environment. He's had the ankle monitor on since October 12th, so we're looking at about six months. He's had no contact. He's been in full compliance with this court's order from October 12th. So I'm requesting um, that I could propose an order, draft an order, submit it to the court to remove his ankle monitor. I see. Is it Miss Miss Alexis? If you take yourself off mute and raise your right hand, you swear a firm testimony. And he was in the military and has a partner, just in case you didn't catch that. You're about to give his, may you swear a firm testimony about to give his truth, whole truth, other about the truth? Yes, ma'am. Is that TPO in front of me? Say that again? Was the TPO in front of me? 
Uh, I don't believe so. I believe it came from Loretta. Sorry. I know it doesn't matter. I mean, I do most of them, so it's either me or Judge Houston. It was in Forsyth. Uh, I think no, the... Uh, Forsyth, I don't know. I don't go up there. Ooh, yeah. Lord, that takes too long. <laughs> the restraining order was in Forsyth, but... They should dump some of those on McBurney. He's, he's got too easy of a call. The I guess. <laughs> where he was arrested. Well, that doesn't matter. I was just yeah. scared if, it was a, if, you, if he violated one of my orders, because that would make me very angry. What's your position? <laughs> um... My whole stance on this entire thing since the beginning. Not uh, just about the ankle monitors. All I want to know. This isn't time for you to testify well, about anything other than just about. Well, the my whole thing has been just about getting mental health treatment because he has had a cycle of showing instability. Oh, let's cop. Let's listen. I just want to know about the ankle monitor. That's it. I, I, I don't. I, I don't need I, a lot I, of 285. I just need I, I, a connector. I have a newborn at home. I would prefer somebody know where he's at at all times. Okay. There you go. That was simple. Uh, that was simple. Thank you. Um, has he bothered you or violated it again? No, ma'am. Just in the past saying, no, don't contact me hasn't been enough. So this makes me feel safer. I got you. What's that? Okay. So... Michelle, I'll tell you this before I hear from Mr. Jenkins, and Mr. Jenkins is what we're talking about. So they have a um, a smartwatch, but and it it kind of looks one of those like uh, it seems, it's, it's bigger than an Apple Watch. It kind of looks like uh, God, what are those one? Yeah, one of those like three thousand dollar watches that like ultra thoners wear. Oh, here we go. Um, operates exactly like a watch. Can't tell. I mean, just if, and I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, he's probably not. I'm sitting here texting the guy from Talent Tricks. Um, if he wants to uh, pay for it, we'd be glad because we don't have anything worked out yet. With um, they're trying to get the whole contract thing worked out so that I can use those some and ankle monitor some. I guess the ankle monitor companies are probably having <laughs> more made because I'm the queen of ankle monitors. So if he wants to pay for the Talent Tricks for a few months and even if then, you know, if you come back and say, hey, he's paying for it, have they found a contract, I could change it then, because then it's just a watch. It just looks like a big smart watch. I appreciate that, Judge. Um, however, I would like to point out that, you know, Ms. Cox, I appreciate her testimony today. Um, they've had absolutely no contact. My client has resolved his, not resolved his mental health issues because they're never resolved, but he sought treatment. He's on medication. He lives at home with his husband. He does not leave the house. He's done exactly what this court has ordered. And I, like I said, I appreciate her testimony, but there's absolutely no reason, and my client has no reason or no desire to be anywhere around the individual females that are the alleged victims. And he's demonstrated that by being in compliance. There's no anger between them. He doesn't, he's not angry about this. He's not upset with them. He understands what happened. and. I can promise you that he will not be bothering Ms. Cobb angry. or Miss Isabella Weller. I I'll believe she's on the call as well. Um, That's a good sign. Uh, and see Isabella Weller. Okay. Oh, I think she's, oh yeah, there she is. Oh, she, she, I forget. She was fixing her hair and waving like it was television. Miss Weller, raise your right hand. I swear for her testimony you're about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Uh, I do. All right. Okay, you got to step away. You two can't or can't have your phones real close to one another. So walk away from Miss uh, Cop. Yes, let her so tell me your position on the um, ankle monitor. And, I mean, like I said, down the connect. Um, I'm I'm in the same place as Miss Cope. Mm -hmm. As Alexis. Mm -hmm. So that you you have that same position. All right, Mr. Jenkins, go ahead. Yes, uh, exactly, Judge. Uh, in this case, uh, for these type of uh, offenses, uh, the ankle monitor is made for uh, specifically in connection with this. And I certainly haven't heard anything that would warrant uh, a modification at this time. You've heard from the two victims. That's our position in this case. Preach um, it. And to be quite frank, he's you know the he's privileged to have a bond in the first place, and so. 
Uh, these are the terms and conditions and the consequences of such until we are able to resolve the facts in this matter. And so well, we just request that you do not defense counsel's motion at this time, Judge. Thank you. So, Ms. Shelley, I could appreciate, but, you know, I got two victims here, even though he hasn't. So, and then, they, and then you know, the state would probably say, well, the reason he hasn't violated because he's got the ankle monitor. You know, it goes back and forth. And after, have, you know, myself hearing 17,000 domestic violence cases and I think count is eight people have been killed, not saying that somebody's going to kill somebody here, but in out of those 17,000 I've heard, I'm a little cautious. So would he like to take up on, and I think the ankle, the Talatrix watch is the same price. And Ms. Shelley, I understand it may be a, a huge burden, and we do have that Orca, that I would be glad to switch it. I mean, I just text the guy with a company saying, what are you waiting on? He's waiting on a call back for this guy, Ryan Weiss. Um, okay. And if they, you know, if you reach back out and see her, I don't know, he will give you the number of the Talatrix people and uh, ask them if they got it worked out. And if they do, then I don't have a problem, you know, come back on here and maybe switching it to getting paid through Orca, if, you know, through the that Orca project, if you would like. But I mean, let me see. I'll give you this, guys. Let me see. Let me put this on so I can find your, let's see. Let me find your, and then if you just reach out to him, because I don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Judge, do you want the case to be reset so we can until so does he want to keep it on or does he want to does he want to pay for the teletrix? I think that he has the capability to pay for the teletrix, and I'd be happy mm -hmm. to coordinate that with him. So we appreciate right. flexibility, Your Honor. So just put that number in there for you in the chat. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. So just call there and maybe keep up with him and what they say. So if you'll do an order, just switch it over to the, well, it's just called the Talatrix. So uh, let's see, blah, 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 what are they saying? How do you spell Talatrix? I know that's just, was... no, uh, it's T-A-L-I-T-R-I-X. I would say more changer. And the guy's number I just gave you, his name is Don. Don. So, uh -huh. And it's actually Don at Talatrix.com if you want to email him too. Um, so just put that there to remove the ankle monitor and place a Talatrix um, or monitoring device on him um, at his expense. And then I guess maybe you'll have to reach out to um, Don and figure out how to get the ankle monitor off and the watch put on. But it, I mean, same thing. Okay. I mean, it's actually kind of fascinating because there's a there's a, there's an app that they give alleged victims that you can't. They can't track him, but they could see if he comes within 200 yards of him. So it's actually really good for things like stalking or ag assault. So they'll, you know, they would know if he drove within 200 yards of their house. So it, it's actually a, it's, you know, it's, it's good, especially when we talk about domestic violence. So that may, if, my question is that if, is it going to go off if they happen to be at the same Target or the same Walmart? Well, I mean, Without planning a coordination, I mean, we could I mean, the boys be. Y'all go to the same Target or the same Walmart? <laughs> I would doubt it. They they don't live it close to each other, but um Well, okay, okay. they can't like monitor him all the time. Right. So, I mean, a little bit of common sense on yeah. everybody's part. So, Miss Cop, Miss Weller, if you're a Target and it shows that he's there, not that he just walked like he's followed you. If he's there, you gotta just some common sense has to prevail that if you know he's always went to that target and you take your rear end down there to go shopping, there's a chance he may be there and it goes off, then unless he's following you, use a little common sense, maybe go get some lunch, then go mm -hmm. back and do some shopping, okay? A little I common sense has to, but hopefully you know where he used to go and where he used to hang out and y'all kind of stay away from there anyway, right? Thumbs up. Perfect. <laughs> So if you send me that, uh, send that order, I will sign it. And then, like I said, if you get in touch with the ankle monitoring company and Don at that number, they'll swap it over. Thank you, Your Honor. We appreciate it. I All will right. send that directly to your email. Uh, sure. You okay. said it there. And like I said, um, they can also reach out to the Talatrix if you Google it. I think maybe they reach out to you. I don't know how it goes. But anyway. I'll, I'll figure it out. Thank you, Judge. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Maybe. Absolutely. Thank you. Good night. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, Lex Gibbs, I got a position for 22CP209685, out on bond for aggravated assault. Let me say 2.0. Good. Gibbs. 
Good evening. Let, let, let Bostic 2.0 do her thing. Go ahead, Bostic 2.0. Uh, defendant just has this one case, Your Honor, um, okay. for today. All right, great. Go ahead. Um, Judge, Ms. Gibbs was arrested last June, and she was ordered um, not to have any contact with uh, Mr. Roach uh, except for communicating about the kids. She couldn't go home, but it has become a real burden for the both of them. They just want to reconcile. He wants her back in the house. She wants to go home. They have eight children uh, between them. Um, he has four, and she has uh, uh, three with him, and she had one before she met him. Um, but they take care of eight children, Judge, and it has become a real burden. They are both professionals. She's wanting to take her co medical coding exam this year. Um, he wants her back in the house. and and uh, Oh, sweet Jesus. What? <laughs> I just want to reconcile the family, and we're asking that you allow us to do that. Oh, eight kids. Goodness gracious. All right, Mr. Yeah, Roach, you no want to take yourself that. off mute? <laughs> <laughs> there's not enough Tito's to get that done. I'm uh, sorry. Hello, Your Honor. How are you doing? If you raise your right hand, you swear for a testimony about to give truth, whole truth, nothing about the truth. I do, Your Honor. All right. You have questions for me, Mr. Hirsch, or you, Mr. Jenkins? I'd request for purple. Uh, I'll I'll go forward. I got Mr. it done. Uh, uh, Mr. Roach. Um, oh, wow, you uh, you heard you heard what I uh, what I said a minute ago. Uh, I did. Is it your uh, desire to have Miss Gibbs back in the house? It is my desire. Okay, that's all I have, Judge. All right. What says the state? <clears throat> Obviously, we have some concerns uh, uh, about that. Uh, do you realize that uh, if there happens to be a disagreement, Mr. Roach, what is your plan to deal with that? In the future, if she were to turn, uh, I, I would assume that there would be continued and no violent contact. Damn it, Jenkins, stop asking reasonable questions. Judge agrees with this. I'll leave in the court's discretion in this matter. Um, but if there is rises an issue, how are you going to deal with it? Uh, cooler heads will prevail. Uh, we've learned our lesson. Because <laughs> it looks like here. I want a cooler heads will prevail t-shirt right now. I really do. <laughs> she, oh, she hit you with a car? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a misunderstanding. Oh. I wasn't I wasn't. Oh, no, hit. It, stop me. Oh, I'm reading the warrant. Third time after circling, she did strike you in the leg of the front of the vehicle, taking you to the ground. So anyway, um Mr. Jenkins, what so you want to remove just the no further violent con no for to go to no further violent contact, Mr. Hirsch? Uh Judge, that's what we assumed it would it would be if we prevailed on it. Um it would just be a no violent contact. All right, let me see what else I I, I don't think I did this bond, so let me see what else they put on it. Come on, stop. So I guess the uh So where are you at now, Mr. Roach? I'm at home. It so really is. Who has the kids usually? Are the kids? Variation on this. Oh, man, I got to get together. Uh, no. What happens is uh, we shift them between work schedules. How about both of y'all take off your backgrounds? Take off who? Your blurry background. Uh, uh, how do I do this? How do I do that, you? You put the blurry background on, so she's not at your house sitting in the car out in the driveway. No, she's not here. Absolutely not. She's at work, if I believe. I'm home. But I'm, I'm she's not here, Judge. I, I've got I've got two others from my rotation right now. It would be totally awkward. Fix this background right now. And she hadn't been there. <laughs> we try to, you know, maneuver things to keep away to to uh, to. Uh, Covert, I hope you're here. We try to maneuver things. That also needs to go on a shirt. Oblige the uh, <laughs> the uh, order. Is this a so that's yeah, so it's a good way of saying yes? You have seen each other. Everything been cool for, when you've seen each other. Just for the kids. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Everything's been cool. Everything's been good. <laughs> just, just for saying. the kids. <laughs> so, Miss Gibbs, raise your right hand. You swear a firm testimony about Gibbs. Truth told truth. Nothing but the truth. 
Don't take yourself off you, Miss Gibbs. Yeah. He makes you mad again, like a husband or a father of your children may. What are you going to do? Um, just think about this day or the <laughs> days before and don't want to be back here. Because uh, it's just unnecessary taxes and we would like to be married. I mean, it was just an isolated event. I don't want to go back to doing that. So the Duffield, the so the Duffield Road is where you're going to live together? Yes. So, okay. So then that would need to be removed. Mr. Jenkins? <sighs> Judge, I mean, <laughs> I don't have a, other than no violent contact, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, okay. So I guess we have to remove. So we'll change it, Mr. Hirsch. You, you can change it and send me the order. No further violent contact. And then. All right. So they they we, they whittle it down to no violent contact, which is probably the right result here. But you you know this is not going to end well. You know they're sincere and they mean it when they say it, but this is not going to end well. There's no way. And of course, she can go back to the Duffield Road because that's where they're going to live, right, Ms. Gibbs? Better than Beaver Ruin. You know, they gotta learn how to act. You know, is that right, Miss Gibbs? <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Okay. As long as that's where you're going to live. Okay. All right. Yeah, I gotta be. I figured out why I like George Jenkins. He's absolutely every bit as cranky as me. <laughs> We've bonded tonight. Good to one another. Y'all got eight kids. <laughs> they take care of eight kids. Yes, Jay. Woo. It's, That's stressful enough. So at least once a day, Miss Gibbs, go take a walk away, <laughs> away from my children. Seriously, you too, Mister Rose, because my hat's off to you. Y'all be good to one another. And uh, Mister Hershey, just send me the order. We'll we'll go ahead in a minute, okay? Yes, and he can make it as of this evening, Mister Miss Gibbs, if you want to. If you want to go home, he can just put as of tonight. Even if he gets it to me and I sign it tomorrow, okay? Thank you, Judge. Yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. Stay safe. All you right, Tom, Thank you, Thomas Aiken. Thank you, Mr. Hirsch. Thomas Aiken. Judge, I, Hello, I have good evening, uh, your honor. one request. Just uh, what email should I send that to? Can I get it, it in the enough. chat? I, I'm sorry. Judge, right. so he can send it to the email in which he got the Zoom link from, and I'll make sure that it gets to the appropriate party. Great. That way we so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. All right. All right. Go ahead for. Uh, you know, the Duggars are like, whatever. Go ahead, counsel. <laughs> Mr. Aiken. Yes, Your Honor, Will Moran here on behalf of Mr. Aiken. This uh, motion for bond modification was in front of he Your does. Honor uh, back on February 27th of this year. Um, at that time, uh, we agreed to continue the case so that myself and Ms. Aisha Broderick with the DA's office could try to negotiate a consent bond modification. Um, she then declined to, to consent to that. Um, I did also... Um, I'm I'm tempted. I don't know if you remember this case, Your Honor, from a month ago, um, but I might request. I I was planning on requesting that we approach, but it looks like all of the other people who I would be concerned about hearing this have left the room at this point. Um, and so, what I will say is that the no, no, there's one person here who's not. Who's, I don't know who that is. Okay, yeah, then I'll I'll, I'll request that we approach if if that's all right, Your Honor. Okay, we can uh, we can go. Uh, We'll go in a breakout room, I guess. Let's see. Let me make a breakout room. Thank you. I apologize for the inconvenience. No, that's okay. Just let me make a breakout room. All right. Open it, open it, open it, open it, open it. All right, I got it. <laughs> All right, I'll join you guys in there. Thank you. Do you need me? Your honor. There was, there was, and I hate, God, I hate this one. He's all what's a dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy, dick pussy. Going back and forth between texts with one another, and I never want to hear it again.
I mean, seriously, I don't know anybody who can keep it together with eight kids. These people certainly can't, but literally, I don't know anyone who can, so that's not saying much. Does my understanding he may have been a victim in the case? I'm not sure. All right. I, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything here. We've gone full circle. I'm back to my original shirt. Does my understanding he may have been a victim in the case? I'm not sure. Are you a victim in this case, sir? I'm wrong. Yes, I'm a victim on this case between <laughs> me and Thomas Aiken. <laughs> oh, so, uh, so Mr. Akalase, you, yours is the car that was that was a hit with the bullet. Is that right? He shot me while I was in my car. Yeah, he shot the car while I was in the car. He busted my window. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, well, I appreciate you coming, um, Your Honor. What I'll say about Mr. Aiken's case today is that. Um, he has absolutely no criminal convictions. Um, he owns his own security company, Stalwart Defense Security, and was employed um, as armed mall security on the date of this incident. Um, there was another individual who mall shot cop. up the mall after being kicked out of the mall, um, and Mr. Aiken Thank is you. alleged to have returned fire in that case. Um, as far as the condition that we are requesting be modified, the original bond that was set uh, forbid him from having a firearm. Um, in addition to the facts that I've mentioned um, to you previously uh, and to the ADA, um, Mr. Aiken is prohibited from working because of his inability to, uh, to possess a firearm right now. Um, Mr. Aiken has a wife and three children who he provides for, um, and this bond condition is making it significantly difficult for him to do that. Um, because he is hired at this mall as armed security. Um, and with that being said, I think that's the information that you need. Um, and I appreciate you considering this today, Your Honor. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Judge. Uh, with the circumstances uh, that's alleged here, and obviously our victim is present here, the state would uh, request that you deny defense counsel's motion for uh, modification of the bond as is. Although this whole entire incident is still under investigation, um, by our office and information uh, that will come and has come to our attention, we need to investigate uh, and in this matter. But as it currently stands, uh, the state cannot uh, consent and will not consent to uh, the modification in this matter, Judge. And uh, that's our position right now. Well, we do intend to follow up on the leads that we have received in this matter as uh, justice would require. Thank you, Judge. So, so Mr. Aiken, um, I'm going to deny it right now. Now I'm going to tell you this, that the, oh God, what was his name? I just, the other guy. Okay, that'd be a no. <laughs> David, I call it you. No, I'm not talking about you. Um, Your Honor, I can send you that information in a private chat if that I is. Just, I just had it up. Let's see. Just, uh, let's see. Da, da, da. So the other person, Marquise Murray. I understand he's got a probation him, revocation really like hearing him. coming up, so uh, your lawyer's going to get a copy of that video to Mr. Jenkins, and we're all kind of going to stay in contact because he said that it's clear in the video that uh, Mr. Murray was doing all the shooting, and that you know you did this, you know, tried you know, for protection and the, for the people at the mall or shopping center or what have you. So don't give up yet, okay? No, no, not yet. Just give us a few more days, okay? But just give us a few more days, and uh, Mr. Rank can put this back on here. Um, he's going to get another copy of Mr. Jenkins. So he's going to follow up and uh, what was that? be Johnny on the spot. So since we don't know the bullets going everywhere, we're not going to say who shot which way. But anyway, um, we're going. He's going to check into it. Mr. Jenkins is going to try to get us an update, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right. So, Thank Judge, you. Mr. Um, Moran will reach out when he wants to have his case reset. 
Yeah, is that what you wanted? Well, hopefully the two of y'all, Mr. Jiggy John, can come into a consent or something. You think once you see the video, et cetera? Well, Your Honor, I, I certainly hope we'll be closer to uh, making a decision. I don't know which way that will be. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Depending on if I see something, I've been watching a lot of video. And uh, right. if it's something that obviously would require something, obviously I'd contact our victim and let them know what's going on if we decided to consent. But if I see something that <laughs> that would go in the opposite direction, then that's where it would be. So, um, right. Uh, but as soon as I can get my hands on, and uh, uh, Mr. Moran, do you have a contact uh, telephone number? Yes, let me give you my, my cell. You know, put it in the chat, or do you want to advertise Yeah, it? I'll, I can put it in the chat. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, one other thing, I am curious, uh, Mr. Akalaste, since you showed up, um, I'd be interested to hear what his position is on the bond modification. Uh, raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear for him? Raise your right hand. Swear for him, testimony about to give his truth, told truth, nothing about the trade. I swear that the testimony I'm about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth. Go ahead, Mr. Moran. Um, Mr. Akalaste, uh, are, are you aware of what this hearing is for, for a bond modification um, for Mr. Aiken? Yes, I'm aware. It was, it was concerning my case because I'm a victim of the shooting. Yes, that's, that's what I understand. Um, do you, uh, are, are you aware that Mr. Aiken was um, armed security at the mall at the time that this happened? Uh, um, I did not find out that he was a security guard over there after the incident, yeah. Okay, so you weren't actually there at your car when this happened? It's So, do you want me to tell you what happened, or I don't know how, how, how I'm answering this question, sir? Cliff notes. You can give him the cliff notes. Yeah, let's ask you specific quickly. questions, yeah. So, so can you repeat your question, sir? Yeah, make it brief. Make it brief, yes. sorry. Um, were you at your car at the time that this shooting happened? I came to a restaurant to eat. He he works in the in the discount mall plaza. I came to eat and I was leaving, driving on the plaza parking lot because that I always come to that restaurant to eat. Now when while I was driving, I was heading towards the old national highway to follow on the road. I was going home and then I heard a gunshot. Pop 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 pop. But I just look at my, it looks sound deadly, but I'm driving so I can do too much looking. So immediately I turned to face the road. Then the bullet that I heard busted my windows and the bullet was coming at me. So it made me realize that the gunshot that I heard, I was the one that the person was trying, was aiming at. So I ended up burning my head down because I, I need to escape wow. what's going on. So I bowed my head down and then there was a curb right in front of me. I hit the curb, my vehicle jumped the curb and hit the main road. I hit in my face on the steering wheel and some things, uh, there was a bumper that was underneath my car. Uh, it got, the knot got loose. Okay, so are you aware of any circumstances that led to this shooting happening? Well, the police came. When the police came, we, go, we, we approached him. He shot nine to 10 bullets, if I can recall, and then he said some kids came to sell something in the discount mall and he, then he He's he's throwing them out and then they got mad. He first said they shot at him. He first said they show him gun. The next thing he said they shot at him. Well, fine. The uh, detective wanted to see the video, the camera footage, because there was a footage, the kind of camera over there. We went in. I was standing there looking at the video. It was him shooting. Nobody was shooting at him. Okay. Thank you for your testimony. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Wait, t tell me, he was seeing say he was shooting. Is he is he saying that that this defendant was shooting this Thomas Atkin or some other guy? I I can't figure out if this guy's trying to help him or hurt him. And that's all the questions I have, Your Honor. Okay, yeah. So just get with um, Mr. Jenkins and all that, and you know, you could just get it back on a calendar. If you just email and let, I mean, Miss Robinson will make notes, so it wouldn't be forever. If you guys need to get back on the calendar sooner. Okay. Thank you, Joe. All right. Thank you. That's all our business today. Maybe we'd be excused. All right. Yeah. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you, sir. Y'all have a good night. Y'all too. You too, Counselor. So just, just so that I note this correctly. So is it taken under advisement or reset? Right. Well, I guess you'd call it taken under advisement, and then we'll reset it whenever uh, Mr. Jenkins gets to look at all the information. That's fair, Your Honor. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Moran will email you and copy all of us and say, hey. I have yeah. your number yeah. as well, Mr. Moran. We'll definitely let you know, Ms. Robinson. So just, yeah. 
All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Y'all have a nice rest of your day. You guys take care. Stay safe. Uh Uh-huh. Well, there you go. We got all the way through it. That was Manning's call today. I I didn't expect to get all the way through it, but I was fueled by White Claw and wardrobe changes. (laughs) I sort of broke it up. Thank you all for coming out. That was actually really fun. And and there was a whole bunch of that that I didn't see. So it was uh, it was interesting to me as we, as we went. I did see the one case about uh, with the gang member, the alleged gang member. Let's keep in mind the state hasn't proven anything yet. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon.